from the Pitcher That Studios of Arizona Contender Series 2023, Week 2, Kareem al Salwadi versus George Hardwick, the entire Contender Series. Let's react to who gets the contract with the MMA Home. Welcome to the MMA Holes Live. It's good to be alive here on a Tuesday night. Dana White's Contender Series is in full effect. Well, it's going to be underway very soon on ESPN+. Plus. We have a link in the live chat or the description if you're watching the replay. And uh, anyone that clicks on that can watch the event live. So if you have ESPN+, Plus, you can watch the Contender Series. It's that simple. And if you're going to watch UFC 292, click that link as well. And uh, you can watch the pay-per-view for the big Aljamain Sterling versus Sean O'Malley fiasco. Let's go, baby. I'm firing it up right now, and let's get it started. How's everyone doing in the chat tonight? Everyone looks uh, well-dressed and groomed. It's good to see everyone here. Um, hit the like button if you haven't done so. If you're looking to place bets on any of the sporting events that's coming up, uh, UFC... Uh, team sports, uh, football's uh, preseason's back. It's kind of crazy that preseason football's back in action. But if you're going to play some bets, go to mybookie.ag. Use promo code MMAHOLES for a 50% match on your first deposit. And shout out to Millions. We have a link in the description if you'd like to watch uh, the watch alongs, uh, all the athletes hanging out with the fans. Uh, if you want to get some merch, if you want to support the athletes, use our link in the description. I saw Mike Davis will be live this weekend on Millions. You know, all these different athletes are on there, and you can connect with them through Millions. Link in the description down below. ESPN Plus, like I said, if you want, want to watch the Contender Series or UFC 292, we got the link, baby. We got the link for you. Live chat and description. How you doing, guys? Ferg, two joints. That one, girl. Anakin Skywalker. I see a lot of people are, are pumped up about Hardwick. I don't know much about him, but when I looked uh, before we went live, I was like, well, this kid's pretty good. Um, speaking of a gentleman that's pretty good, hold on a second here. Let me just click for monetization. But we have uh, a couple of fun guests coming in. Uh, tomorrow and one uh, on next Wednesday. Are we okay? There we go. So for those that don't know, how many people in the chat watched last week's Contender Series? One's in the chat if you watched last week's Contender Series, because we have a gentleman that's coming on, the only person that actually made it exciting last week coming on the show. Uh, you should do tough. After it's so boring. Well, that's why I'm not going to do it. But what I'll do is I'll stick around for uh, Dana White. I want to hear what he has to say after the Contender Series. I'm sure there's going to be some good questions for him. So we'll stick around and, and play the press conference. Or the media scrum, I should say. Uh, let's see. Lil Gloom, Blair, Duck Duck Moose, Knox. Watched something. I watched something last week. Okay. Uh, Ferg. All right. So a couple of you watched it. Yeah, not the best contender series but there was one shining star that came out of last week he was a six foot three lightweight from australia handsome looking fella well he's coming on the show tomorrow he's the only one with the knockout his name is tom nolan and some people are like people are like who the fuck is that guy well this guy is a this a potential problem in the ufc and uh, we're lucky enough to have him on the show. So this is going to be kind of cool interviewing Tom Nolan from the very beginning. People are going to be looking back at tomorrow's stream and be like, oh, smack, I was there when that champion from Australia came on the show. That's crazy. So tune in tomorrow for that. Tom Nolan, very big upside on this kid. I, I just still can't get over six foot three, 155. And he says he has no problem even making that weight. It's, it's kind of crazy. How a six foot three person can weigh 155. I can't wrap my head around that. But yeah, he's coming on tomorrow. So that's going to be fun. And we'll be talking to him. We'll also be talking about 292 a lot more as well. So make sure you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell. All right? All right. And that's for my Aussie peeps in the chat because we got a lot of Aussies in our chat. So that's for you guys. Uh, Let's see. Let's see. Such a punchable face. <laughs> <laughs> you probably wouldn't say that to his face. If the holes are watching, I'm watching. Let's go, baby. 
Uh, Smother Man All Day by Finish. Sean Hart can translate, Moss. Uh, let's see. Except Tough. I only like the old Tough. Yeah, me too. The old Tough is way better than the hogwash that they're putting out in front of us these days. And it even has Connor involved, and it's still not interesting. That just goes to show you how bad that show is. Uh, up my Aussies, 155.63, almost impossible. I guess he's still alive. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I, I saw his media scrum, and he was talking about um, how uh, he has zero issues. Yo, you got to you gotta tune in tomorrow. This kid is a, he's, he's a character, man. He seems, he's very respectful. He's not a big trash talker, but if he has to, he will. And the dude has been fucking finishing everybody. The dude only has, what, five professional wins, and he's been smoking everyone. He's got a contract in the UFC. And this dude, is he says, no problems, top 15, no issues. So so it, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, genetics are pretty nuts on this kid. Listen, an Australian that is a superstar is a big deal for the UFC. I mean, you got uh, Volkanovski. You got, uh, you know, the New Zealand talent with, uh, or the Chinese guy, uh, Israel Adesanya. But it's a big deal, you know, having having a big Aussie star. And this kid has a lot of potential. So I'm curious to see, you know, what this kid's about, his backstory, and all that fun stuff. So tune in tomorrow for that. I like the Contender Series a lot. Even though last week was kind of subpar besides that kid's fight, um, you know, Contender Series is very interesting. And uh, we get to see these guys from the very, very beginning. And speaking of guys you've seen from the very, very beginning, look at Sean O'Malley, right? Think about what Sean O'Malley has done. On Saturday, my man Sean O'Malley will be fighting for the bantamweight title. That is going down on Saturday. So from the Contender Series all the way up to the bantamweight title, headlining Boston, bantamweight championship, big deal for Sean O'Malley. So, um, you know, Contender Series... It used to be the ultimate fighter. It used to be seeing these guys in the ultimate fighter, you know, climbing up the rankings and doing their thing. Well, Contender Series is like a fast pass. It's kind of crazy. You can have five pro wins, and the next thing you know, you're, you're a ranked fighter. You're fighting for a belt. It's, 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 a, it's a weird situation, but it's kind of fun. So that's that. Uh, who is more out of their mind, Ferguson or McGregor? Oh, Tony. I mean, I, I, would, it's, I think it's easy to say that Tony Ferguson is probably the craziest guy on the roster. McGregor's nuts, don't get me wrong. But um, I, I feel like McGregor is more of the, uh, the substance abuse problems, you know, with McGregor. By the way, speaking of McGregor, he's on a nice date with his wife, so they're still together. He's, he's having troubles with the hairline, but the beard is back. The beard is back, boys. So you know he's getting ready for war. He's growing his war beer, beard. And it's nice to see both of their veneers put together in their face. Why does everyone have veneers now? Like, I feel like it's okay to have a little bit of defect in your teeth. You know, the veneers are weird. <laughs> They're real creepy. <laughs> they really are, man. Like, I understand. Some people have some really bad teeth. You want to fix them up. But then, like, how do you go from horrific teeth to just perfectly placed teeth in the mouth? It just, I feel like it's just as bad as terrible teeth. You know? It looks like Fire Marshal Bill. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird phenomenon veneers i feel like veneers should have maybe a, a little bit tint of a yellow or a little you know disfiguration in the teeth you know just a little bit just to make it look real so she's a three <laughs> my god that's this man's fiance for god's sakes he cheats on that woman leave him alone leave her alone for god it's bad enough he's running around behind her back and then you got to say she's a three <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, she's already getting pounded all different directions by social media. She's got to deal with Connor. Then you got two joints. Say, ah, she's a three. Again, she smelled Connor's last five victims. And so it's kind of funny. I had this fucking... I'm going to be nice. But I had this uh, young lady comment on, on our last video. And I, I, I put the offer out there. P... Listen, I am not saying Connor is a perfect human being, and he could have done pretty terrible things. It's not, it's not impossible. But I do believe in innocent until proven guilty. I'm, I'm a big fan of that because i got to be honest with you, people make mistakes, but people are also falsely accused. People do fucked up things. It's just how things work, right? I had this fucking train wreck jump into my comments. 
And I'm, I'm going to show you guys real quick here. Like, I understand why people don't like Connor. I get that. You know, I totally get that because he's he's become a little unlikable. Even me being a super, you know, McGregor fan, uh, you know, I've kind of fallen off as well with him, you know. But uh, it is weird. Oh, did she pull it? Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, come on. Oh, you bitch. <laughs> she fucking pulled. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. You're not a bitch. I apologize. Thank you for never letting the fact that he legitimately viol violently raped a girl, or raped a girl, excuse me, both vaginally and anally to the extent that she had to get her tampon removed by nurses at the hospital when she went there after because she had a tampon in when he raped her. Okay. This is a comment from a goddamn... Now, when I clicked on her uh, YouTube channel, I was like, well, this would be a person that would write this. So I, I put a very polite response. I said, do you have proof? If so, DM at the MMA holes on Instagram or Twitter, and we'll have you on the show. And you know what the response was? How the, f how the fuck do people make claims about shit? How, 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 do, how do people make claims like this with zero evidence? Make claims like this. How does this happen? How does this happen? I don't understand. So, like, listen, the offer's out there, darling. If, if you're watching the show right now, please hit us up. I would love to have you on the show. I would, and I would be as polite as possible. Because if you have evidence about stuff like this, I, I mean, let's hear it. But, I mean, Jesus Christ. This is why, this is why I can't pile on the dude. I just can't fucking do it. Because you got people saying shit like this with no evidence. Dude, that's some pretty horrific <laughs> details right there. So I would love to know where the hell she, what's, what's her source of information on this? Because this is the first time I'm hearing this. Zero response. So sweetheart, if you're watching the show, please slide into our DMs. I would love to know more about this. This, this sounds fascinating. You, wouldn't you think those details would be all over the news? Like, wouldn't that be everywhere? This is what this is what I'm saying, man. People like that, if you hate Conor McGregor, people like that make you kind of say, you know what, I'm going to side with Conor. Because that's just nuts, man. To just come up with accusations like that with no fucking backing. Like, that's terrible, man. So apparently Conor pushed in her tampon. Anyway. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Dude, it's nuts, man. It's, it's fucking crazy. So the offer's out there. If you'd like to come on the show, feel free. Tell me tell me about these details. I would love to know. We'll have a very edgy MMA holes program about this horrific uh, situation. And that's that. All right. Let's get ready for the contender series here. The first fight, Cameron Smotherman versus Charlampos Gregorio. Oh, super chat. Quite the names. Adam, what's up, Adam? What's the one shot or submission you watch from the Oop can think tank? God, that's not me waking up from that. What's the one shot or submission you watch from the UFC think, thank God, that's not me waking up from that? Well, you know, it's not It's not even something uh, me falling asleep to. Like, I feel like if I were to get knocked out by Francis Ngannou, it would suck, but it would be quick and, you know, to the point. I don't want to be arm barred. I don't want my arms snapping in half. I don't I don't want to be in a Kimura where my fucking shoulder pops out of my socket. Those are things I just wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to be knee barred. I wouldn't want any of those three. That's that's something I wouldn't want. Thank you, Adam Smart. Appreciate you. And you are the top dog. Yeah! Let's go, Adam Smart! Five dollars! Oh, wait. You're from New Zealand? Well, listen, we'll have an Aussie fellow on tomorrow. So that's for you, bud. Thank you, Adam Smart. Appreciate you. Very kind of you. Smother man. So basically, Vulture is only ancient remnant of one. What the fuck are you talking about? All right, let's look at these two guys that are about to compete. Let's do it. Let's do it, baby. All right, I'm, I'm looking forward to a lot more carnage this time than last. Last time, it was Disgrazia. Okay, so we got Cameron Smotherman. He is a minus 175 favorite. 
He's on a four fight win streak. He's eight three and zero from Tejas. He's a five foot nine bantamweight fighting uh, Charlampos Gregorio, and Gregorio's in the cage right now as Smotherman's walking in. Gregorio is a plus one forty five underdog. He is thirty one years of age, five foot seven, and he's on a three fight win streak. All finishes. CFFC. So CFFC, and this guy is from Fury. So here we go, baby. This is the first one. Will we see contracts? It seems like if you win, you're getting a contract these days. That's how the the uh, the UFC has been running the contender series. So the drama out the window. You win, contract done. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Winner, winner, contract dinner. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, let's do this. Let's get the view thing over here. Make sure you hit the like button if you haven't done so. And let's go, baby. Tuesday night fights. Armbar breaking and a leg scares the hell out of me to be conscious and have your appendages broken with bone stro Exactly. I'm with you, man. Uh, Jose, I am 100% with you. Those are the submissions that I'm just like, ah, I don't want to Like a vicious knockout, you're, you're just done. Like you're, you're just cracked. If you get hit with a flying knee, one second... Like they just you just wake up, you're like, what just happened? But you know what happened when they're dissecting your arm. Okay, here we go. You guys ready for Carnage? 25 versus 31 year old Gregorio. Unfortunately, Contender Series did away with their their graphics, but we'll have the live stats between the boys. Uh hold on, let's do this. Bam, 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 bam. Herb Dean's your referee, and all right, the fight's gonna start. So, <laughs> there. Thank you. Just, just let's just get to it. So, I think the Ultimate Fighter finale is tonight. I think. I don't. I don't know. I, I think it is the finale, but I'm gonna stick around a little bit later. Uh, we'll have Dana White on talking about, you know, just talking to the media. Okay, round one has begun between Smotherman and Gregorio. All right, make sure you bash that like. I appreciate those hitting those like buttons. I know it's tough to do, but it's completely free. Nice shots to the head, to the body. Smotherman landing. Smotherman to the body with the right again. So the favorite letting him go early. Gregorio trying to close the gap. And Smotherman to the body once more. Gregorio trying to kick to the head high up with the right leg and missing. So we got 417 on the clock. Nice combination by Smotherman. Upstairs, downstairs. Man, these fighters. Oh, right hand is beautiful by some other man to the face of Gregorio. And Gregorio drops him. Holy smokes. Hammer fist and now ground and pound coming in by the underdog. Gregorio, oh my God. No fucking way. No way. Gregorio just finished Smotherman. Smotherman gets up and starts arguing. The underdog got in there and just ran through him. I would like to see the the replay. Now, if they're going to stop these things, they're going to stop them pr pretty early um just because they're young, right? You know, you don't want to let these guys take in a, you know, a crazy beating for no reason in the contender series, but it is a big opportunity and it seemed like a good stop. Hold on, let me just double check. He dropped him with the right, but it, some other man just kind of lost his balance. Here comes the ground and pound. Uh he's eating him on the head. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. He kind of went out, and then, like, the way he was eating those shots. Let me watch this again. Yeah, he was connecting. Wow, what a vicious start to the contender series. It's the right hand. Yeah, it was a nice drop. The hammer fist that came in, the lefts. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good stop. Very good stop. Wow. Talk about contracts. So, the gentleman from... Paphos? Where, where the hell is that from? I have no Cypress. I don't know what the where the hell this guy is from. Smotherman gets the carnage in the first round. Easy contract right there. Let's go. Wow. Carnage! Lick the carnage! Embrace the carnage! Go on a date with carnage! Vote, Vote for carnage! Make babies with carnage! Play jokes on carnage! Masturbate with carnage! Ejaculate the carnage! Propose to the carnage! Enjoy pancakes with the carnage! Celebrate the carnage! Wow. That's a plus 145 under. 7-3-0. 31 years of age. Big opportunity. Strong bantamweight. So let me show you this guy over here. Since they don't have a picture on ESPN. 
His name is Char, Char, Shara Lampos Gregorio. I might have to do the graphics a little bit different. I do like... Hmm. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Because I do like the live stats, but I do... I, we should have pictures on there. I might have to... Uh, Oh, shit, this guy's out of law. Fucking A. This guy's out of law MMA. I never even seen this. Here's Ray Longo in the building. Dude, yo, let me just say this. Ray Longo is up for Coach of the Year. Will you guys vote for Ray Longo, please? I would love to see Ray get Coach of the Year. My man has been... Fu yo, people coming out of law have been killing it. Ray Longo, man. Yo, law MMA has been killing it. These young prospects coming out of there looking pretty good. Holy smokes. Good for you, Ray. Make sure I get his hair in there. He does have an interesting part. He's kind of he's kind of got a Jordan Levitt haircut going. <laughs> he's kind of got that going for him. Yeah, Ray's the best, man. Ray is like one of the coolest fucking dudes, man. We definitely have to get Ray back on, for sure. It's been a minute since we had him on. We got his number. Maybe I should call him, right? <laughs> hey, Ray. It's been a minute. We haven't Actually, we haven't had him on since we were in New York. But we did his podcast and uh, made friends with a bunch of people from his gym. And Yeah, Ray's the man. Holy cow, man. That was some finish. Charlampos Gregorio. Just ki straight killers coming out of here. Smiley face Whitman is always coach of the year. Trevor Whitman? No, stop it. Stop it. Although, you know, he's, he's, uh, what's his face? Uh, Gaethje look, did look pretty good, but, um, I don't know, man. I think like, or, or, um, what's his name from Extreme Couture? You can throw him in the mix, but I, I think Longo's the guy right now. Just from the kids that are coming out of there, Longo's the guy. The link's in the live chat. Are you blind, Sports Nation? Live chat. Click it. Watch it. Super simple. All right. So one in. Shout out to Law MMA. That's awesome. That's really cool. So so tomorrow, I'm going to keep on bringing some of these Contender Series guys on because I'm telling you, after seeing like Sean O'Malley and um, Jamal Hill, like seeing these guys come out of the Contender Series and becoming champions or fighting for belts or, you know, becoming ranked easily. Um, I think we should get these guys young. Billy Goff on the show, he's going to be a problem. Some of these young dudes that we've had on the show, they're going to blossom into something special. The kid we're going to have on tomorrow is one of those guys that I'm like, damn, you know, this kid, this kid could be something. So tomorrow night, like I said before, we're having Tom Nolan from Australia. He's going to be phoning in, or he's going to be uh, Skyping in from Australia. We'll have him on the program tomorrow. And then next week, we're going to have return guest on the show because he's trying to pull for a big fish fight. His name is Sam Alvey. He's coming back on the show, Smiling Sam, and uh, he's trying to fight Brendan Schaub, like for real. Like he wants to fight Brendan Schaub in uh, Game Bread FC. Brendan was debating on doing a bare knuckle fight, I guess. And Sam Alvey is like a hundred percent in. Like he he wants this to happen. So Sam Alvey versus Brendan Schaub. Yep. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Sam Alvey, another heavyweight fight. Brendan, I mean, talk about a train wreck. Give it to me, baby. And Sam Alvey will be defending our honor considering Brendan Schaub blocked us on Twitter. So we are, of course, Team Sam, Smiling Sam for the win. The homeless cats will be going nuts over that. Sam is the one fight that would make sense for Shaw. <laughs> we'll get his side. We'll get Sam's side next week. Sam's a great dude. Very nice guy. My wife, Laura, you're married to Laura Sanko? That is weird because... She's married. And I don't think his name is Jay Smith. Shaw versus Alvi. Haha. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. I, apparently, like, Masvidal, like, it's like a thing. They just need Shop to agree. Dude, could you imagine the shit show that would be? That'd be amazing. You're married to Mackenzie Dern? Ah, please. 
Please. Look at my ass. Please. Please. Look at my ass, please. Stop it. Stop what you're doing and look at my ass. Please. When's Mac Mackenzie Dern going to fight again? She's looked really good. Please. Someone, please. Stop what you're doing. Dern has, she's got some physique on her, right? But then she's got that dopey voice and that stupid face, right? It's not dopey. She's she just... got that dopey voice. Hey, think... look at my ass. <laughs> look at me. Come all over my ass, please. <laughs> please, come on my ass. You're making fun, but she's got a nice booty. And you please. Know it. Butter my ass with your jizz, please! There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Please! Butter your ass with my jizz! Please! Please, look at it! Sirens are outside. Mackenzie might have called the police. Can you guys hit the likes? I don't understand how we only have 42 likes. This, likes, this is... This is disgrazia! A fucking fantastic show like this with 42 likes. This is a disgrace. Gozerian, how you doing, buddy? Welcome back. Welcome to the danger zone. I don't know what the hell that means. Wait, why did this... Oh, okay, it popped up. Okay. So what else is going on, chat? You guys pumped up about Saturday? You guys pumped up? I'm pumped up. We got... Uh, the press conference Thursday, we got Fuka Friday, we're going to do some predictions, and then we're going to roll into the fight. It's going to be a good time, baby. Please. Uh, Brendan can't pass the drug test, and he still has three fights left in his UFC contract. When he le Does he still have? I would imagine so much time has passed. I, I would imagine that he's he's okay. And I don't know what game bread drug testing is like. So I yeah I I think I think Brendan will be fine. They let Luke Rockhold go under contract to fight bare knuckle. I'm pooped. What's going on Saturday? Some fights, you know, some fights. All right, we got some. Matt. Wow, this girl looks very angry. I do have to be careful doing contender series fights. I've noticed by doing the contender series fights, if we get a little crazy with our goofy sense of humor um sometimes these fighters like they, they search for themselves on on youtube and then they see there's a couple of shows doing fight reactions to them so like oh i wonder what they said about our fights and then they got me saying stupid shit so i gotta be really careful uh Ju john janina janina silva looks what she's 115 She's 5'1". What is up with these 5'1 fire hydrant looking girls? She is... There's a lot of that going on here. So she is the underdog. Janine, Janina Silva from Brazil. This is Brazil and Brazil violence. This girl looks familiar. Ed, Eduardo Mora? Nope, never seen her before, but she looks like somebody. Janina Silva... Five foot one, sixty three point eight inch reach for the young lady, and now her opponent Eduardo Mora is making her walk a little more feminine looking, and she's trotting towards the cage. But she's got a dude strut. I wonder what the percentage of female fighters are lesbians. What do you think, guys? What do you think the percentage is? Fem a lot of the female fighters do look like they like the ladies. You know? What do you think the percentage is? Uh, if you're a fighter from tonight, watch the replay. Know that two joints think you smell like tuna casserole. 96 point... Yeah, what's the percentage? 96%? 75%? Her face is fat for being skinny. 69%? Yeah, I think it's pretty high. I would imagine it's pretty high. This girl had water mora. She's hugging our corner. Getting ready to compete. But yeah, they're very like tough. Very aggressive looking women. A lot of tattoos and they just look like they've they've gone through some stuff, you know, some of these ladies. So here we go. 
two undefeated young ladies looking for a UFC contract. Now, women like heavyweights, um, I feel like it's super easy for these gals to get a contract. Just win. That's it. Because the UFC is always looking for some young new talent with clam. They're looking for some good clam talent, so. <laughs> All right, here we go. So Silva, 114, 115 for Mora. 31 is the age for Silva. 29 for Mora. 67 inch reach. A 60 inch reach. Wow, this is different than topology. For Silva. And that's all the stats. Orthodox, both girls. Okay. So one in the books. One in the books. Finish first round. Will we see it again? Or will this be a decision? Hold on a second. Let me just fix this graphic real quick. Okay. All right. Round. Whoa. Takedown right away by Mora. Let me fix the clock over here. Damn. This might be over before I'm done. Mora immediately gets the takedown. Let's put it. We'll start it up at 435. And Mora instantly doing work on the smaller young lady. Here we go. Synced up. Now we're clam to clam. Mora inside the guard of Silva. So right off the bat, Mora on top. It's a strawway bout, and Moore is looking to do work. Silva trying to hold close. I wonder if the new rules are in effect for the Contender Series. I'm curious. Clam stats should show how many inches they, they take. <laughs> she could fit a six-inch cock in her pussy. Like, is that what you want? <laughs> is that, or are you talking about how much food she could fit in her mouth? Uh, four minutes on the clock. Still inside the guard is Mora. Mora trying to grind the body of Silver, and she's slamming her towards the cage. Silva just holding on for dear life here. Now Mora has a close against the fence, and she's pounding her with a couple left hands from the top. Mora in control. It's another situation of the bigger girl just dominating the smaller girl. We saw this on Saturday. Passes the guard. Mora just too big and strong here. Silva's just having all sorts of problems. And Moore's just dragging it around the cage some more. Silva's just holding on. Oh, boy. This is very lopsided. It's weird seeing, a like, oh, here, here we go. Silva's throwing up the triangle, and that's not going to really work. Moore's just too big and strong. Here comes the hammer fist from the top. It's weird seeing these bigger girls just beat up on these little girls. We've been seeing a lot of this lately. It seems like size doesn't really matter with the guys. You know, some of the smaller guys are crafty, and they can they can find ways to... Do things on the ground, whereas when, with the females, if they're severely undersized, they're fucked. And Silva's having all sorts of problems. She's just stuck on the mat here, and Moore is in control here with 250 left in the first. Uh, scissoring, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Actually, no, well, your wish is granted. It looks like a scissor's happening right now. And I'm not even... <laughs> there's a scissor going on. I'm not even, I'm not even exaggerating. They are, they are scissoring. Uh, now, uh, it's kind of still there. Muff on muff. That's eh, a scissor. That's a pretty good scissor right there. Wow. Do you have a... Do you... What the... How did you know that was going to happen? Hammer fists and rights are coming down by Mora. Complete domination here. You look 20 to 3 in total strikes. More strikes are hitting on the ribs. Mora is just in complete control. And Silva is just having... A, taking a beating here early in this fight. Mora is trying to set up some elbows now. Mora is on the half guard. And right hands are trying to slide in. There they go. To the side of the head. Moore is looking for another first round finish on this card. Silva is trying to put her right hand around, right arm around the neck and try to use it to get back up. But Moore is still holding her down on the ground. I kind of hope that Silva could get back up. I want to see what she can do. But she is completely nullified as more ground and pound coming in from Mora. Dana White's contender series going down. This is week two of the 2023 extravaganza. Moore is trying to pass over to a side control. She does. She pins the right arm. Oh, not any. And there she goes again. She pins that, uh, excuse me, left arm. And now Silva is minus an arm. So Silva's on the ground. She's got Mora side control. And Silva is able to separate the arm. She's just holding on for dear life. And now Mora just bounces her easily. This poor little girl. And now Moore takes the back. We're going for the neck. Silva is trying to defend. There's one minute left, and the tap happens. We have another fight here. 
ladies and gentlemen, that ends in the first round. The bigger, stronger favorite this time, Eduarda Ronda. That's her nickname. Mora goes 9-0 and with the Carnage. Wow. Carnage! Lick the Carnage! Embrace the Carnage! Go on a date with Carnage! Wow. Hope for Carnage! Make it's a quick night! Carnage. Play jokes on Carnage! Yeah. Masturbate with Carnage! Ejaculate! The Carnage! Propose to the Carnage! Enjoy pancakes with the Carnage! Holy Celebrate smokes. the Carnage! Two fights, two lopsided situations. Uh, so Silva takes her first loss. This poor girl, man. I kind of feel for her. Yeah, she's very emotional. And Moore is giving her respect. Nice. There we go. Nice sportsmanship there. Silva's like probably like, get the fuck away from You know, let me ask you guys in the chat. Because I've, I've actually heard multiple opinions on this. What are your thoughts after a fight? You finish your opponent and then you're hugging them and trying to give them respect. That's the last thing they want. They just want to be left alone. You just finish them. Either submission or knockout. Just leave them alone, right? Am I wrong? Maybe let them their head clear. Maybe like after the smoke settles, they're outside of the cage. They see each other in the hallway. They give each other respect. But just leave her alone, right? This poor girl, doesn't, she just lost the UFC contract. She got embarrassed in front of Dana White. The last thing she wants is you hugging her. <laughs> right? I mean, I understand what Moore is doing. She's trying to be respectful. But it, it's kind of disrespectful. I just submitted you. I took your contract, everything you worked for, but don't worry. Keep your chin up, <laughs> dude. Wait for her to kind of, you know, you know, absorb what happened. Yeah. Maybe a handshake. That's it. Right. It's so weird. Yo, Romero kissing his opponents. Like what's going on, but really nice finish here. Eduardo Mora gets the win. And uh, pretty easy to say, two contracts here. I mean, I got to be honest. I, I do have to see more from Eduardo Mora. She beat a girl that's five foot, you know? Very tiny, like, undersized girl. I mean, it was a lopsided size difference. This Eduardo Mora um, also had uh, Almeida in the, um, the crowd. So, looks like they might be teammates or there's some sort of connection. Jalton Almeida, who's a freaking beast. Mora looks more exciting than three-fourths of the UFC women's roster. Well, I mean, we do have to see her fight someone that's somewhat close to her size. I mean, that was kind of silly. She fought a girl's five foot. Like, I mean, I mean, like, I'm talking. She was just, she just too big for her, you know? This girl will be champ? Dude, chill. She beat a fucking midget. <laughs> she be Wait, hold on, guys. She could be good. You know, I'm not saying she's not good. This is definitely not, okay, now she's a champ. She beat a fucking five-foot girl. Like, she, this girl had no business even being there with her. You know? I mean, just too big and strong. We need to see more. We do have to see more from this girl. But you never know. You just never know. No notification? Yeah, I'm not surprised. I am I am I'm giving up on YouTube. So make sure you guys hit that like button. If you're anti the YouTube suppression that's been going on lately, please hit the uh the uh, like button. Thank you very much. We're too we're too controversial for YouTube. Our emojis are too controversial for notifications. Yeah, you know what? I didn't even get a fucking notification. Nope. I didn't get a notification. <laughs> I have a second channel that's subscribed. I'm logged into that channel. No notification. No clue. Wow. Let me make sure I got the notification bell on. So I'm not. Let me see. Dude, what the fuck? What is that about? Yep, no notification. Uh, and I got the bell on. Yeah. Fucking hell, man. That's annoying. But who cares? I'm not going to sit here and complain. Who cares? Uh, yeah, so we got two. If you're just jumping in, two fights, two contracts. I mean, first round finishes, one submission, one TKO. So uh, uh, underdog to open the card. Gregorio gets the finish. 
And then they kind of shuffled this around a little bit. Mora over here gets the submission in the first round. And she does look good. But like I said, we do have to see her fight someone, you know, that's uh, you know maybe a little bigger than five foot. I don't know. Call me crazy. This girl, the girl that she fought probably could be an atom weight, I would imagine. You know, we're seeing a lot of that. UFC has no atom weight. So they, they're bringing in these young girls that are five foot tall, just wanting to be into the UFC. That's that's what I'm saying about women's MMA. It's very limited. And you have these super small girls with no atom weight class that have to fight at straw weight, fighting bigger girls. And there's no other place for them to go. You know, we're all going to die. I clicked early today to notify me when the start and it didn't show. <laughs> Wait, so you click to actually like when it says, do you want to be notified? So when we, when it's scheduled, you click to want to be notified and it still didn't work. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh my God. Alan Tam, come fight me, Alan Tam. My five foot four body will fucking put you in a pretzel. All five foot four of me would make you cry. Uh, you never get a notification? I'm not surprised. If Hamster was two meter big, he would be greedy as hell. What are you? What? Jason Anderson, what are you? Who's? What? It's contender series, uh, so none of them have been tested. Yeah. So listen. This is this is what the contender series is about, okay? This is it's it, it in the beginning when you had Sadiq Yusuf versus Mike Davis and you had fucking all out wars with guys with like legit experience, you know, like it was different. But when you're when you're watching it now, the contender series is a lot different, right? Um except for the the main fight on the card because you got a guy that's 14-3 and 0 and 12-1 and 0, you got some people with a little experience. But if you look around this thing, like, I mean, well, and I guess they, yeah, this, this, this Hanato Paulo Jr., I guess he's got some experience versus Aslan. But Hyder Emil, 7 0, 5 0 for, I mean, you, you have, listen, when you're, now she's 5 1. But when you're 5 0, you shouldn't really be here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand a guy, the guy that's coming on tomorrow is only 5 0. But realistically, you should probably take a couple more lumps on the regional scene. You know, get that, um, you know, get that fucking work in before you're in front of the big man. But the contender series, they do. They sign these guys for, uh, you know, five fight deals, small contracts. Hopefully they do really well. And then you have guys that are ranked that you're paying peanuts. You know, that's that's what it is. Uh, you're over six foot on the screen. Yeah, it depends with TV. Like if if you're watching me on the phone, I'm not very big. But you you got me on a sixty inch screen. I'm pretty big. <laughs> pretty big. Yeah. No one will ever know the true size of the mystical. You must use your imagination when comparing facts. Jason, are you on drugs? Yeah, Jason is. I have a feeling Jason is a an altered account of another. But thank you for stopping by. What about Bo? He had to come back twice. Yeah, Bo was a weird. You know why? Because Bo was. Well, I think two reasons. I think they wanted to end the year strong. So they kept Bo. You know what I'm saying? Like they wanted to end the contender series that year strong. Get the ratings up. Have Bo Nickel fight again. And I also think that Bo was running his mouth so much that they kind of wanted to say, all right, give me one more. So I think there was two reasons why they had Bo fight twice on the Contender Series, knowing he's going to win both times anyway. I'm big on your phone? That must be a big phone. How do they find fighters for the Contender Series? Usually it's through management. It's through um, uh, promotions. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, gyms. You know, coaches and stuff like that. Yo, I got this guy over here. He's looking. You know, a lot of these organizations, these regional organizations feed the UFC. You know? So, and the UFC, I'm sure, has scouts that pop up, you know, to these little regional events. 
So that's how they find out about these guys. We've we've actually covered a lot of athletes on the regional scene that popped into the contender series, and and it's pretty cool, man. It is pretty cool for these young guys. Listen, I understand what the UFC is doing as a business, but it is pretty cool for the fighters. If you if you think about it from another angle, these people with only five professional wins and then they get a UFC contract, that's pretty nuts. You're literally at the elite level of your professional sport. That's that's crazy, man. That really is crazy. Uh, got to sign a lot, a lot of new people when have cards every week. Yeah, and and these guys from the contender series, well, at least now most most of them will fight at any time. You know, at a drop of the, you know, like they'll because first off they want to get through that contract quick so they can get a you know a better contract. These fighters. And they want to just please the boss, like in any job, right? You you start a job, you'll you'll bend over backwards for your boss. And these contender series fight, fighters are just so happy to be in the UFC that they'll they'll take fights that they probably shouldn't take, you know, to save cards and whatever. So, you know, it's it's a smart move by the UFC. It's an entertaining show to watch for sure, and it gives opportunities to young talent that, you know, back in the day would never have these opportunities. That would be just buried on the regional scene, and some may never even get. An opportunity like this, you know, so it's got its pluses and minuses. It is good though, yeah. Guinnesson, like I, I truly enjoy a contender series. I do. I'm not by no means am I complaining. I, I enjoy it. Even if it's a bad week, dude, it's fun, man. It gets right to the point. We get to see fights. Like right now they're showing highlights, but who cares? We're gonna be into the fight in no time. Before it used to be a little more dramatic. You know, when Dana was giving out the contracts, now it's not as much anymore. I kind of wish they would go back to the old ways, you know, where Dana's kind of a dick. That made it more fun. You know, it gave you the reality t TV show feel. You know, a little bit, a little drama. I liked that. Now there's no, not much drama. They will take any fight, 100%. Yeah. Although, I did hear the gentleman that's coming on tomorrow. I did hear he's, like, they asked him, are you going to turn it around? You didn't take much damage. Australia, you, you want to jump on that card? And it seems like he wants to wait and have a full camp. So, I'm curious. I'm really curious to interview this guy tomorrow. See where his head's at. Back in the day, it would be called the Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, the Ultimate Fighter, but it's different, though. Because the Ultimate Fighter, you're stuck in a house, and you're in a tournament. Dude, it's so tough. Now... Chances are, you know, even if you lose in the Ultimate Fighter, you still get another shot in the UFC, which was used to be cool about the Ultimate Fighter. But you're still put through hell. Contender Series, one fight. One fight, you win, you're in. It's that simple now. You know? So, uh, Contender Series is way, way better than the Ultimate Fighter. A lot of fighters that we've asked about which way would you rather go, they all say Contender Series. All the fighters say Contender Series. No one wants to do Ultimate Fighter. You only do it if you're desperate. If Contender Series is not calling you, then you're like, oh, fuck, I gotta go into this house. No one wants to do that shit anymore. Or you're just looking for attention. I don't know. Yeah, tomorrow's gonna be cool, man. This guy's cool. We linked up with his uh, his management team, and um, they got some real cool fighters under this management team. So hopefully we have a good relationship. And we'll get the rest of the fighters on their team. Wait until you see the people on this management team. You're like, wait, what? It's pretty cool. Anyway, we got a Sean O'Malley signed card over here. We're giving this away on Saturday. Okay, Saturday stream. We're going to be giving this away our fight buddies. So you have a chance, win or lose, someone is getting the Sean O'Malley card. Or Sean O'Malley wins or loses. Someone's getting this puppy. So it's signed. Someone gave this to us. Whether it's real or not, I have no idea. <laughs> but it looks real. The autograph looks pretty good. So I'm going to just go with saying this is real. If you want a chance to win this, may be real, may not be real signed card, tune in Saturday. We'll give that puppy away. People are hitting us up like, why are you going to give that shit away? You know, if Sean becomes a champ, this you know, could be worth something. It's for you guys, baby. It's for you. Anything that we get from the community, most likely we'll do it as a giveaway. So if you guys want to send us shit to give away, like cool shit, you know, send it to our address in the uh, link tree down below. All right, here we go. Hyder Emil, another undefeated fighter, is getting buttered up. He's got Gilbert Melendez in his corner. And he's fighting Emra Sanmez. And the ESPN Plus stream has gone black. 
Uh oh. If you're a character and a good on camera, then tough may be uh, good for you, even if you don't win. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I just think it's a it's a with the contender series, man. You're better off holding out and saying, yeah, I'd rather do that. But yeah, maybe if you're you know someone that wants, you're more in for the attention than. But then, I mean, how much attention you get? No one's watching Tough anymore. Thank you, John Guy. Appreciate you. Looks like you re-upped your championship package. Thank you for being a blue belt, man. Thank you. You're the man. Very kind of you. All right. Let's get into the next fight. We're not wasting any time tonight. Herb Dean is your ref. Here's your tail of tape. I'm not going to die. Just take a look at it. And we're just going to talk about the fights here. Here we go. Boom. They don't wait for me to do the tail of tape. Contender series is all business. So we got a meal who is unbeaten. Oh, he's a nasty right hand right off the bat. Sonman is 14, 4, and 0. Way more experience. Three fight win streak, but Emil is trying to get him down to the ground immediately. Emil locks around the body. Now he's going for a leg. He's got Sanmez against the fence. This guy, Sa uh, Emra Sanmez, he looks pretty scary too, though. And Emil is just dragging him around by the... Oh, nut shot. Uh-oh. Emil has need the nut of San Mez. So he should do this. No question about it. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Oh, yeah. Ouch. 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 All right. He seems to be fine. San Mez looks over the herbivore. And we're fighting again. They're good. Here we go. Sanmez is going to win. He does have the, the, the fighter. Oh, just got dropped. He has that face that you usually pick when you're making your predictions. You know what I'm talking about, guys? You know what I'm talking about? Whoa, oil check here by Amil as Sanmez is trying to go for the legs. And Amil is draped over him. So San, Sanmez is trying to work for these two legs. He's really trying to drive through, and Emil gets back up. Emil trying to get to the backside, but Sanmez is relentless for this takedown. Wow, good start here to the fight. A lot of grinding against the fence. So Emil had control in the beginning. Now Sanmez controls against the cage. Emil is trying to put pressure around the neck. The unbeated fighter is pushing down on the backside of Sanmez and just puts him on his knees as he's draped over. And now Emil is just trying to muscle his way to the back. Damn, they're struggling here. But Sanmez grabs onto the leg and pulls Emil down to a knee. Emil trying to get back up, and Sanmez pulls two legs. Humping, humping, humping by Emil. Man, Emil is relentless here in the first. Trying to get this thing down to the ground. Is that Pickett in the corner? What's his name? Three minutes on the clock, and Sanmez is still going for the takedown. Emil does get back up. He's draped over him. Emil's trying to use the left arm for defense, and then Sanmez just flips him over, grabs around the waist, gets the back. Man, Sanmez is relentless. Holy crap, he throws a hook in, rolls him around, and now Sanmez has the backside. Emil's trying to roll out of this, and Sanmez is trying to hold on to the back position. He hits him with a left, hits him with a right, still hanging on off the back, and Emil gets back up. The 7-0 fighter back up to the feet, bent over with Samnez draped over him. Nice knee, timed perfectly to the head. Samnez lands it. Good knee by Sam. Yo, Samnez. Where's this kid from? Turkey. And out of England. So, I don't know, maybe born in Turkey. Amil is trying to attack the right arm of Samnez from off the fence. Hits him with a knee. They separate. So, Emil, oh boy. Emil's cup. All right. That's weird. Yeah, it's weird. We're having a cup malfunction. <laughs> that was really strange. You know, it was nice of Emil. I mean, Samnez. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, Samnez to, to let him adjust his cup. Because he's like looking at him like, what the fuck is this guy doing? He's like grabbing his dick. And then Samnez just grabs Emil and flings him down to the ground. They're both on their knees. Samnez in control. And then Emil tries to wrap around the body. Samnez looks to go to the backside. Samnez is just too strong. Emil goes begging for the cage. Just drags Samnez over there. Gets back up. Eats a left. What a fight. Samnez shoots back down for the takedown. Drives the shoulder in. Gobbles up two legs and takes him down. Samnez with the takedown on Emil. 
the aggressive grappling of San that's just he's overwhelming Emil in his first. Right hand slipping in by San Mez. And San Mez trying to drape over Emil. Emil gets back up again. A flying knee by San Mez. Shoots back down for the legs. And Emil puts pressure on the back of the head. Slips right out of it. Nice escape by Emil with one minute left. Emil hits him to the body with a nice left hand. Yo, Emil could swing the momentum back. If he could stay up on the feet, he stuffs the takedown. And then pushes San Mez down. Yo, Emil now in control. Side control. Elbow from the top by Emil. What a back and forth fight. Samnes trying to pull him into guard. Both guys are looking exhausted here. The high pace of the first round really taxing on these guys' lungs. And now Emil on top. Trying to get some ground and pound to finish the round strong here. 28 seconds left. Emil goes to the backside of Samnes. Goes for the neck. Oh, he's going for the choke. Wow, if he could pull this off. 20 seconds left. He's got only one hook in, and he's trying to get the neck of Samnez, but he doesn't look to be under it. Samnez is trying to push him off, and he does. Samnez puts him off. Oh, now Samnez is on top. Samnez is on top, and he elbows from the tops onto the head of Emil. What about... Oh, the elbows. Whew, vicious elbows at the end of the round. I was going to say Emil got the round, but then Samnez and Strong, I'm going to give it to... Emra, San Mez. What a round, man. ESPN Plus, baby. ESPN Plus, if you want to watch it, click the link in the live chat. Good round. Very, very entertaining round. So back and forth. Who, who, you, who, you, who do you think got that round, guys? Because either way, you could be right. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Emra, although I thought Emil was about to switch it into his favor, but... Wow. Damn, man. Talk about wanting a contract. Both of these guys want to leave with their hand up. Do you like fruit? Do you guys like fruit? Male looking great for an underdog. Yeah, he is. He is. Emra San Mez. Actually, Emra is the underdog. Emra is the underdog. Both guys looking really good, to be honest. It's a close round. Emil was like, he was escaping everything. So Emil coming in aggressive, kick towards the body. Definitely seems like Emil is the better striker for sure. Now Samnes shoots him for the takedown. Emil's draped over him again, trying to stuff this takedown, putting all his body weight on the back of the head of Sanmez. Sanmez trying to drive through, and he does. Pushes Emil's back to the cage, right in front of the bosses. Sanmez looking for the takedown again. And Emil defending. As Emil's defending, he's trying to lock up the neck. Then he pushes off the head, dragging the leg away, stands up and escapes. Up kicks by Sanmez. And now Emil falls into side control. Emil now controlling over Sanmez. Sanmez sitting with back against the fence. And Emil now with the position of dominance. Four minutes on the clock. Emil just dragging him down to the ground, onto his knee. Emil looking for the backside. Sanmez on his knees, protecting his neck as Emil goes for it. He can't get a hook in Emil. Sanmez protecting from the hook very nicely. So Emil's just trying to go all upper body for that choke. Emil's got to get a hook in if he wants this. And Sanmez, very smart, rolls around. Pushes in for two legs, ducks the head underneath, and now he's sniffing for the crotch again. Emil trying to escape over. Samnez rolls him around. Emil is sitting down. Now Emil just flips over, tries to escape the leg, almost back up. A left drills in by Samnez to the body. 315 left. Oh, yo, this fight is making me tired. Like these guys have got to be exhausted. Now they're in front of the commentary team, and Samnez is trying to pull two legs together and drag him down again as Emil gets back up and then back down. Samnez in control. Three minutes on the clock. Oh, my God. Rolling into it as Emil spins and gets on top again. Now stands up over Samnez. Samnez going for a leg, and Emil just skips away, resets back to the center. Damn, yo, Emil's like Houdini out here. Emil putting pressure on the back of the head of Samnez. 
Pulls the leg away. Samnez trying to go for the takedown. Emil slips away, but falls onto his knees, and Samnez drapes over him. Even with the relentless attack of Samnez, Emil still has the heart of a lion and has Samnez against the fence. But Samnez pushing from off the cage, and they separate. Oh, a spinning back fist by Samnez shoots him for the takedown. It's going to come down to cardio. Emil goes to the backside of Samnez. Oh, my God. They're both back down to the ground. Emil in better position, draped over Samnez. 2.03 on the clock. Emil looking for the neck again with no hooks. Got to get those hooks in, man. Sanez defends on his knees. And Emil is draped over him once more with 150 left in the second round. And then Emil resets back to the center. He says, Sanez, get up. Herb Dean, whoa, ducks underneath a spinning move of Sanez and then shoots him, pushes him down to the ground. Emil on top. So Emil inside the guard of Sanez. And I think Emil's got a little better of a gas tank here. With 130 on the clock, Emil's about to go up two zip if he stays here. And Emil, oh, he almost mounted him. Half guard the other side on the left leg now. Emil in control, 120 on the clock. Guys in the chat, gals in the chat, please hit the like button. Emil is out cold. What the fuck are you watching? Emil is draped over him. And nice knee to the chest by Emil. Emil's trying to go for the guillotine now. And Samnes gets up. He rolls out of it. Samnes now gets control on top. But Emil gets onto his knees and tries to drag his body to the fence. Samnes hits him with a couple of lefts. And Emil's back up. Now Samnes goes for the takedown. And Emil slips away. Stands up. Comes forward. Hits him with the knee to the body. Emil hits him with the right to the chest. Both guys are gassed. With 34 seconds left. But Emil has just a little bit more in that tank. Controlling against the cage. Samnez goes for the hip toss. Doesn't get it. Emil pushes him down to the ground. Draped over with 22 seconds left. <sighs> Woo! Yeah, I don't know why the clock is off. Was the clock off the whole time? Sorry about that. We have 14 seconds left. In the second round. Yeah, I don't know what happened with my clock. What happened? Oh, well. Four seconds. Three, two, and one. Emil's up to zip. Wow. Wow exhausting to watch these guys go at it. Dude, craziness. Looking at Samnes slowly try to get back up to his feet between rounds. Oh my god. Woo! Damn, man. I'll get it for the a third. Sorry about that. Wow. So it looks like Sanmez is going to need a finish, man. Gilbert Melendez barking orders to Emil between the rounds. Yeah, the dude had a tough time getting to his stool. Sanmez. This guy, if he wants that contract, he needs to finish this dude. Good luck trying to do that. So we're watching the Contender Series. This is week number two. We had two fights with Carnage, and this one is just a, just a dog fight. Going into the third round. Yeah, I won't be watching the Ultimate Fighter after this is shown the Ultimate Fighter commercial uh, or graphic on the screen. But I will be playing. I'll play Dana White at the media scrum. I'll play that here. We'll see what Dana has to say post contender series. And Sam is coming in with a high kick. Oh, comes in with a nice right hand and shoots him for the takedown. Sanmez switching it up, trying to get this body down to the ground again. But, I mean, he's got four minutes of control time, but he really hasn't done much with all that control time. And Emil is putting pressure on the back of the head, tugging on the neck of Sanmez, and then spins him around as Sanmez is trying to go for the legs. Emil's saying, let me get that neck. Oh, he's going for the guillotine. Tugging him back up to the feet. Sanmez eats a nasty knee to the forehead by Emil. Emil just grinding on my man now. With a right slipping in, 410 on the clock. Sanmez got to get off the cage. Blood appears from under the nostrils of Sanmez. Knee to the body again by Emil. And Sanmez showing his toughness as he separates. Sanmez tried to step into a right hand and misses. Both guys are just shot 
absolutely shot, and Sanmez pushes him to the fence, going for two legs. Woo! Mm-mm-mm-mm. Moss, you're f- you were a fanboy. The man was a fanboy. Moss wore a t-shirt of Connor. No, this is me, dude. This is me. When I hit 10,000 subscribers, the viewer made this for us. See? All the belts. That's me. All the belts, baby. Yeah, someone, someone sent that to me. All the belts. And then we made it a shirt for a little while. Ten, that was when we hit 10K subscribers me all right so Emil is just draped over Sanmez Sanmez on his knees hammer fist coming into the side of the head like I said before Sanmez needs a finish and Emil is in control oh uh, now Sanmez rolls around to the leg trying to pull him down again they're both on the ground they're both squirming around here and Sanmez winds up on top big opportunity now 250 on the clock Sanmez is on top of Emil and let's see what he can do here Emil is grimacing, just trying to drag Samnez and push him off him. But he can't. And here comes some oh, right hands from the top. Emil trying to get back up. Samnez gave him some space, which is a bad move. And Emil gets back up to the feet. Oh, boy. You got your green belt? Congrats, baby. Thank you for being a member. Thank you to the members out there. Samnez shooting in for a takedown once again. Three for 18. Oh, my God, dude. Three for 18 takedowns. It's not going to work, bud. (laughs) You might need a new plan. And Emil gets back up again. Oh, boy. Samnez. Talk about. Oh, boy. Shit in the bed. Unless something crazy happens with 150, Samnez is about to lose this thing. Emil and Samnez back on the ground. Samnez is draped over the head, trying to tug him down, and Emil gets back up again. Five for 20. Uh, Hardwick, I see a lot of... How many people are here for Hardwick, man? He's the main event. You got a couple more fights before him. What, uh, one more until Hardwick? Or maybe he's next. Hold on a second. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, he is next. He's next. So hang in there, guys. Oh, I was going quick tonight. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's one more. One more. Man, oh, man. So Emil is just standing over Samnez. Samnez is now 5 for 21 on takedowns. These guys are just completely gassed. And Samnes shoots in again for a takedown. Oh, it's not working, bro. Emil stops him, hits him with some hammer fists. Could you imagine how tired both these guys are? Like, it's, it's, dude, their arms look like noodles out there. We're under 30 seconds now, and Samnes rolls him around, grabbing on the leg. Emil hits him with a couple of rights, stands back up again. Hits him with a right again. Samnes on the knees. All right, let me ask you this question. It looks like Emil's going to win this fight. I would imagine with five for 20 takedown attempts, I would imagine they're going to give Emil a contract considering, whoa, man, telegraphing a head kick, spinning with Samnez, and Emil just slowly just ducks underneath it like it was nothing. All right, fight's over. Woof. Woof. God damn. New rules. Well, here's the thing. The ref had no time to stand anything up because Emil just kept getting up before the ref could even step in there. It was just constantly Samnez just driving in, driving in, driving in for takedowns. And it, they just didn't work. You know, like, that's what sucks. Like, if you have a game plan and it's not working, it's going to be time to switch things up. You know? Five for 23. It's just not working. He kept going for it. Money Moicano is live and eating during the fight. <laughs> He's hustling, man. He's hustling. I want money. I want money. I want money. Give me money. <laughs> Give me money. Give me money. 
Give me money now. Now. Simons might have got a record for longest takedown attempts. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, 23 is a lot. I don't know what the record is on the contender series, but fucking hell. I'm curious to hear what the boss has to say. Split decision? Stop. Oh, it's unanimous. They had a split screen like it was a split decision. They're just trying to add some drama in a nonsense fight. All right. Okay. I was about to say, what the fuck? Split decision my ass. All right. All right. So it all went to Emil. Emil dominated. Not dominated. He just stopped a lot of takedowns. Landed more strikes. Wow. Fucking hell, man. Dude, that was wild. You'd be surprised. If, well, I mean, we know Somnes is not going to get it, but Emil will get a contract because Dana White's going to be like, before the old days, the old days of the Contender Series, he, he passes the boss. He's talking to Dana White here. In the old days, you know, Dana would have been like, I didn't see enough. Well, I want to see these guys come in there and put on a show and finish. But now he's going to be like, you know, when you stop that many takedowns, come on, you're coming into the UFC. Cheap labor. Come on in. Well, he's undefeated. That's not his fault that his opponent just wanted to make love. Does JBM call me baby? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No, she doesn't. In the beginning, we kind of did a little bit. And then we stopped. We grew up. <laughs> we were like, yeah, we're not going to do that anymore. That performance was a performance of a lifetime. Get over here. Love seeing those t those non-takedowns. Good job. You got a contract. I'm going to pay you 50 bucks for your next fight. <laughs> Five fight contract. $50 a fight. But you get really cool Venom shorts and rock sneakers. We're not paying you for those, but you, you get them for free. Just make sure you're wearing them, all right, kid? <laughs> I'm going to ask tomorrow's guest is that if that's what Dana White said. Congratulations, kid. Good job on your knockout. Here's some Venom shorts. $50 per fight. <laughs> Go get them, kid. Welcome to the UFC. Minimum wage. <laughs> oh, God. All right, so we got two more fights on this card. We'll see who gets the contracts. Surprise, surprise. They're all getting contracts. <clears throat> the fight's a draw. Contracts for everybody. So next fight is a lot of Brazilians on this card. Very nice. More Brazilian activity. Actually, not really. The last fight, uh, the ladies fight two Brazilians. Uh, and, oh, what am I telling you? There's only three. Paulo Renato Jr. Renato, baby. Against Ibo Ijan. Man, Ibo, look, these guys look scary. Oh, it's a heavyweight, a light heavyweight fight. Okay. Here we go. What's up, everybody? Everybody gets a contract. Fuck it, Friday. Enough. I saved a hundred bucks on no graphics for tough. It's so weird, man. Like, yeah, they even like the contender series used to have the fighters' pictures, right? They used to have the fighters' pictures, and you just never knew who got a contract. Now, mystery. <laughs> mystery I know they're taking pictures of these guys just put them up on the website you can't be that fucking lazy I don't get it what kind of fucking production do I follow Gianni's picks no no I don't I like my money in my pocket I actually want to see Jake in MMA I'm interested all right Jake Paul guys come on can we take a break from Jake tonight no Paul talk tonight okay tonight for the kids. Tonight's for the uh, the contenders. 
No Jake Paul tonight. Just, let's take one night off. And then, I don't know. Tomorrow, I don't know. If you want to talk about it again, whatever. No, George Hardwick is after this one, yeah. So he must have a serious following. Tell me about the, the Hardwicks, the Hardwick fanboys. What's going on here with this guy? Tell, help me out. I am a complete casual. <laughs> casual. He's a, a Cage Warriors guy, right, if I'm not mistaken? He is a big favorite. So another UK talent. Wow, 94%. Of Tapology is picking this guy. He's 12 1 0. <laughs> he looks like a fucking psychopath. That's what I like. Yep, bunch of finishes. Some canceled bouts. Probably people don't want to fight this kid. He looks like he might be uh, legit, right? I don't know the level of talent that he's fighting, but he must be pretty good. He's the bot. He's, I'm from, he's the body shot king. Oh, shit. That's my kind of fighter right there. If, you, if you're familiar with this show, you know how much I love a good meat hook. I love how a, they work the body, man. So if this guy is a guy that rips him to the body, I'm in. Love watching those fighters. This guy used to fight in Desert Force. He's 14-3-0, his opponent. And he's on a four-fight win streak. Decisions two finishes and he did get finished yeah well he did get finished a couple of times here in brave all right chances are your boy george is going to get it done okay so that's the next that's coming up after this the these big light heavyweights come in so up with Strick strickland he hurt no why are you saying that no i don't think so where'd you hear that if you want to watch the technical striker, Hardwick is the guy. Yeah, it's kind of... I like there's buzz about someone I have no idea about. I haven't seen... I haven't watched a Cage Warrior fight in a while. We used to do Cage Warrior fight buddies. Then we went big time. And uh, we just, you know, just the big fights. <laughs> just the big fights over here, you know? But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm Hard Dick. Is that his name? Hard Dick? I'm looking forward. If you guys are buzzing, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, these guys... I wouldn't mess with either of these dudes. These guys mean business. B man, one buzzing one. in with the two thirty seven. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So so far, Adam Smart is the top fucking dog with the five dollars. Will he stay up in the lights by himself? We will find out very soon. What's up, brothers? This fight's got me bricked up. This one here, you guys bricked. He's bricked up. So 6'3 is Ibo Aslan. Six foot Paolo Hainato Jr. 205 championship weight. 29 years of age for Jr. Aslan 27. The 77 inch reach for Aslan. 73 for Jr. Both orthodox. We got Turkey. We got Brazil. Coming up next. I finally made it home after the the messed up commute due to Komodo Harris was in town. What? Oh, Kamala Harris? Is that what he's saying? Ugh. Sorry to hear that. PFL fighters are the first fight on the UFC card this week. PFL fighters are on the first what? I'm eating Sloppy Joe Bombay shit. Hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. Enjoy. Whoa, B-Man. Wonderful. Why, wonderful. why does that look like? Why is it over there? Thank you for the... <laughs> I was like, why is he doing 501? And now I know why he's doing it. I see what he's doing over here. He took you out by a penny, baby. He took you out by a penny. Dog. Oh. Well played. Well played. That's a seasoned veteran right there. Now you're in the lights. Mm -mm -mm. Donation. Here we go. All right. We'll get ready for the Contender Series co-main events. 
I'm not sure if George Hardwick, George Hardwick is good enough to be a top 10 fighter with the depth of the lightweight division. I tell you what, with the guy we're having on tomorrow, dude, lightweight is stupid stacked. Wait until you see the gentleman we're having on tomorrow from the Contender Series. I mean, you got guys 6'3", lightweight. Like, you got these massive, scary dudes. Lightweight is... That is it. If I was in the UFC, I would steer clear of lightweight. I would do whatever I can to be in any weight class but that. Good luck trying to get ranked. All right, here we go. Round one, light heavyweights, Aslan versus Hinato Jr. Jr. in the blue trunks, Aslan in the red. Both guys have majestic beards. Although you can't see, but I could see that. Junior bouncing in and out, throwing out the jab. Both guys are very, very respectful here early. There's a referee that I don't recognize. Never seen this guy before. He's a tall man with a very big, weird face. Junior and Aslan just very cautious here early. Aslan slowly trying to move in. Oh, Junior connects with a nice left hand. Aslan taking his time, moving in. Like, for instance, this guy is 6'3", Ebo Aslan. And here he is at light heavy. How the hell is this guy at... I don't know how the hell this guy is at lightweight. Here we go. Nice lay kick by Junior. Junior comes in. Oh, here we go. In the pocket, both fighters trade, and Aslan tags him. And Junior says, whoa, 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 let me stop for a second here. So, Hinato Junior moving in on Aslan. And Aslan trying to hit him with the high kick, but counters in with a nice right hand. Following up, that's right on the face. So far, Aslan finding him very patient, but uh, efficient with his striking. As a left hand slips in by Hanato Jr. to the face of Aslan, Aslan hits him with a nice leg kick on the outside. Hanato Jr., the plus 110 underdog, pretty close. As a spinning attempt comes in by Aslan, he does not throw the kick. Just spins. A lot of respect by both of these guys. A looping left hand by Hanano Jr. misses by a mile, but followed by a body shot that misses as well. Aslan hits him with a couple of right and left hands, and Aslan's moving in. He's tagging on the face. He's unloading, and down goes Jr. as the ground and pound continues by Aslan. Aslan just ran through the Brazilian. The ground and pound. The ref had to come in there and save the man's life. And it looks like dad, very emotional, rushes to the cage. Another first round finish. This man now at 12-1-0. His name, Ebo Aslan. Carnage. Wow, man. Carnage. Wow. Lick the carnage. Embrace the carnage. Go on a date with carnage. Vote for carnage. Make babies with carnage. Play jokes on carnage. Masturbate with carnage. Ejaculate the carnage. Propose to the carnage. Enjoy pancakes with the carnage. Celebrate the carnage. That was impressive. He just took his time. His name is Ebo Aslan, the last Ottoman. <laughs> Isn't that like furniture? Ottoman? Um, yeah, he looked really good. Just taking his time. Didn't, didn't, you know, he waited, waited, waited. And then when the moment presented itself, he landed and never stopped. Just a machine gun barrage of punches by Ebo. And he just ran through the Brazilian in the first round. Dana White clapping his hands. There's a side mouth going by the boys over there. It seems like this man's going to get a contract. And we're going to get ready for the main event of the evening. Oh. Super As chat. Seattle Ryan comes in with a turn. For the best damn channel, the best damn community, what? and the best damn host. Props, my dude. Who Camel Toe Harris and her barricade. <laughs> Fook Camel Toe. Fook Camel Toe. We got a new top dog. A new top dog, baby. $10 no no. Let's go. $10! All hail Seattle Ryan! Up in the lights! Woohoo! Thank you.
you, Seattle no, Ryan. No. Glad you escaped Camel Toe Harris. Kainato, Kainoto Harris. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I see four contracts. Is that the leads with him? He got Roman to leads with him? I look like Roman to leads. Whoo, boy. What a night. Oh, what a night. Can you guys hit the like button, please? I asked politely. Can you guys please hit the like button? Thank you. Thank you. All right, the fight everyone has been waiting for. George Hardwick fighting Abdul Kareem Al Salwadi. How many names do you have? You're just a name hoarder, for God's sakes. All right, I'm going to pick Hardwick since that's what the chat's going with. If you're wrong, that is the leads. Ah, I knew I smelt Cheyenne Vlismas's pussy. I knew I, I knew I smelt it through the TV. You made babies with the like button. Let's go, baby. Thank you, thank you. If you hit the like button, you're just a glorious human being. It's so essential and crucial to a channel that gets no love from YouTube. So make sure you bash that puppy up, okay? Ground and pound the like button. And be wonderful, wonderful. Appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy day to hit the like button. You know? It's good. It's nice. It's really nice. So keep on hitting that thing. Beat it up. If you want more Contender Series action, hit that like button, okay? Wonderful, wonderful. We got Wildberry! Hardwick creeps me out. If you told me he was convicted for manufacturing child pornography, <laughs> I would believe it. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. Thank you for the two dollar donation. I see what you're saying. Um, you look at this man's face; it's either someone stuck their finger up his butt, or he was caught doing something really wrong. And he does have a pedophile mustache goatee. If you're not connecting the mustache to the goatee, you could be a sex offender. I I, I agree. You got to connect it, man. You can't, you can't not, and if you can't physically connect it, then you got to have one or the other. Or just, I don't know, grow a whole beard and, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know what that, does anyone in the chat have the disconnect? You got to stop doing that, man. People be crossing the street, they'll be gobbling up their kids and be like, we got to stay away from this person. You got to connect them, it, that's the key. <laughs> it's the key, man. But, he's got a fantastic body. So that softens the blow, right? Uh, Chris, are you streaming seven days a week now? I feel like it grind and hard, bro. Yeah, we, we are live constantly. Like I haven't had, uh, I, I don't remember the last time we took off. I don't remember. I have, um, let me know in the chat. Would you be interested in this? So Angel Gotti had me on her show. Angel Gotti, the daughter of John Gotti, the, the, the great crime boss, John Gotti. Angel Gotti was nice enough to have, have us on her uh, did like a Patreon. They, they call it an interview, but it's more like a conversation with me, Angel, and um, Marla. Very nice ladies. Very good people. And go check out Angel Gotti's channel over there. But I do have the actual footage of it, and it's like an hour conversation. Should I drop that video on this channel? Are you guys interested in that at all in any way? Let me know in the chat if you'd be interested. Maybe I'll drop it one of these nights. Maybe when we get closer to Gotti Mayweather too, I'll just just drop it on the channel. Let me know if you're interested. If not, I won't. I'll just keep it and masturbate to it. You physically assaulted the like button? Very nice. Very nice. I won't call the police. Your secret's safe with me. All right, so we're getting ready for the main event of the evening. I've been doing more than just hitting the like button, Moss. I have been doing uh, unspeakable things. All right, let's go. All right, Craig, you're in, comrade. All right, why not? She a fox, the best. She's a dime, baby. Yeah, go. If you go over the Angels channel, so tell her the MMA hole sent you. She's got some fun stuff over there. A lot of drama going on between her and other like mob channels. There's a lot of. If you like drama. They got it over there, and they're great people. Angel and her, whoever she pulls onto her panel when they're all talking, they're all really cool people. So I support her channel. They have fun stuff. It's my guilty pleasure. You'll find me popping in the chat a lot. 
Uh, looks like Hardwick is sitting on the like button, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah. You know what he looks like? He looks like he's guilty of not hitting the like button. That's what he looks like. It's like, hey, hey, George Hardwick, did you hit the like button? And he's just like, uh, well, may maybe. Maybe I did. This is a very guilty face. Mr. Hardwick, did you hit the like button? Do I like women with big feet? I have a friend that's female with big feet. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. Attention span is all over sometimes. Guilty as charged. I hit the like, answer me question. What's your question? I wine and dine the like button before I skull fuck. <laughs> you skull fuck the like button? That's cool. I want you guys to do unthinkable things that I like button. Skull fuck the like button, please. He looks like Ghostface without the mask. <laughs> he yeah, he looks like the anonymous mask. The um, you know, uh the the hacker mask, that anonymous. That's what he looks like. Or he could be Zaro. He's got like the Zaro goatee and mustache. Is that Zaro? I had a really good looking chick, but she had huge feet. I mean, you can get away with it. Not many people really pay attention. I don't know, only weirdos pay attention to feet, right? But I could understand if you're dating someone and then like, like you can't stop looking at their big ass feet. But I can't be like that because I got, nah, my feet suck. I got rid of my toe fungus, guys. Let's go. Win. Big win for me. Lamisil was the key, even though I called poison control, it's gone. Got clear nails. It's amazing. It's a miracle. I know you guys have been wondering, but now you know. Give the like button a prostate massage. Okay. Do it. Do it now. Are we at 100? We're not at 100 likes. What the fuck? How does that even work? How do you have 100 plus people? 140 people in there? No, not 100 likes? Nothing wrong with a cheeky toe in the bum hole. At the year mark, I noticed the feet and said, what the fuck? So it took you a year? It took you a year? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't really pay attention. But it is weird. Women with big feet is a weird thing. Was she a big girl? Was she tall? If she's a tall girl, then she's going to have big feet. If she was a short girl with big feet, that's, that's really strange. She's kind of like a hobbit then. That's that made me sound old as fuck. What what part? The the toe fungus or <laughs> what 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 did I say that made me sound old? Because I am old. Hope George gets it done. All right, you going for George? A lot of people going for George. People are really fired up about this guy. I hope he gets it done too, because there'll be a riot. So this guy's from Texas over here. The Palestine guy. The Palestinian. He's, he already, he's coming in with a knot on his head already. He's got that... What the hell? He's already coming in with an injury? Dude looks like he's beat up already. So this guy, Abdul Kareem Salawati, he looks like he's beat up already. And Hardwick's making his walk. Yeah, wow. This, so this guy is a big deal, huh? He's got an Andrew Tate-looking face. He's got a very Andrew Tate face. Like Now I know why his goatee is so big in this picture. So this goatee in his picture, I under why I understand why it's so big because he's got zero chin. Like his goatee's a lot shorter now, in real life, and he's got a very uh, like mouse-like face, like no chin at all. It's bizarre. His lip goes into his neck. This guy's a weird-looking dude, man. Okay, he's got a lip. His lips into his neck. Hardwick looks like he has been to prison, and got. And, and go tout. Wait, hold on. Am I reading this? And go tout. Oh, got out. Gotcha. Hardwick went to prison. Now he looks hard. I'm judgmental about everybody, but I feel worse when I when I criticize women. I feel worse. I start feeling guilty after. I don't feel guilty when I criticize men. We're men. We could take it. You know what I'm saying? But I like I like making fun of people. I think it covers up my insecurities and gives me content. So, so I do it. And I'm supposed to describe what I see. I'm a reaction man. 
Moss likes his boys with big feet. I love a man with a big foot. It's it's so attractive. It it gets my juices flowing. All right, so George Hardwick, Hardwick is five foot nine. The lightweight is one fifty five, five seven for Al Sawadi. Uh, twenty eight years of age, Al Sawadi. Twenty six for Hardwick. Seventy two inch reach versus a sixty nine inch reach. Both orthodox. Now, if you just look at the physical stats of the guys, nothing really stands out with Hardwick. You know, physically, there's nothing like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. <clears throat> he's just an average dude. So let's see how he fights. I'm curious. Here we go. Round one. He's already fighting a guy with his his right eye is already swollen from a previous fight, I guess. I don't know. When was the last time he's due for it? Five months ago. Why? He must have had some hard training. So Al Sawadi looks severely undersized. How tall? He's 5'7". All right. Oh, man, nasty right hand by Al Sawadi on the left side of the face of Hardwick. Almost fucking dropped him. Holy shit. So that got Hardwick's attention. Now he's kind of covering. Hardwick comes in. Dude, you imagine Hardwick gets slept in the first? We saw one underdog win. Al Sawadi got a bunch of experience, 14-3-0. Pretty quick. Hardwick doing a good job backing up and defending. He's trying to get something going here with the hands. Moving in, but Hardwick... Not as fast as Al Sawadi. Al Sawadi is in and out, trying to stick and move. Al Sawadi doing a good job keeping Hardwick guessing. And Hardwick is just trying to download the information in front of him. Oh, another right hand by Al Sawadi. Tags Hardwick on the left side. Hardwick grabs the leg. And Al Sawadi spins off of it. Al Sawadi throwing the jab out there. Or the straight out there. Then a leg kick. Man, Hardwick only landed one punch so far. Al Sawadi's the man that's been a little bit more aggressive and landed a little bit of damage. Hardwick eats it again. Wow, yo, Al Sawadi hits hard, man. Hardwick just taking his time, and Al Sawadi's coming in and out, landing the left, switching the stances. Hardwick is just chasing him. Al Sawadi throwing the left and the right. Hardwick is just trying to find anything here. Al Sawadi with a kick towards the body, the one two hitting off the block hands of Hardwick. You know, maybe Hardwick's just got to get a round in. Just feel out the octagon. Big opportunity. A, a lot of hype. Left arm by Al Sawadi lands. Hardwick is a minus 350 favorite. He's getting outworked here early. Al Sawadi bouncing back and forth, and Hardwick's trying to cut him off. Here comes Hardwick now coming in with a couple left hands, but Al Sawadi swings through it. Hardwick stays on top. He keeps. Cutting off Al Sawadi, but a little reluctant to come in after getting popped twice hard. Those early shots by Al Sawadi definitely has Hardwick second guessing himself a little early. You could tell he's a little reluctant to come in. 225 on the clock, still very early in the fight. And Al Sawadi trying to go for the head kick blocked by Hardwick. Hardwick follows up with a leg kick of his own there. 214, the game plan of Al Sawadi paying off. So far, as Hardwick is having a lot of issues. Hardwick trying to move forward, but he just keeps walking into some jabs. Oh, nice right hand by Al Sawadi again. Another right hand by Al Sawadi tagging Hardwick. Hardwick eats a jab. 155, Hardwick moves forward. And Al Sawadi switching on the stances. Very active as he circles. There's a nice jab there by Hardwick. And Al Sawadi trying for a Superman punch. Al Sawadi got unlimited energy here in the first. Oh, comes in with the high kick. Nice left hand by Hardwick in the counter. So Hardwick finding a home for the left. Hardwick just slowly trying to cut off Al Sawadi. Al Sawadi tags him with a couple of lefts. Keeps moving. There's that body shot that the chat was talking about by Hardwick. He lands it. Al Sawadi, whoa, spins a heel in there. Just misses on that one. Hardwick steps away. 150 on 15 on the clock, and Hardwick walks into a left. Another Superman punch followed by a flurry. Yo, Al Sawadi's very fast. Hardwick throws the left in there, but Hardwick, just, he's just like a, two, a little tad slow. Having problems with Al Sawadi's speed. Hardwick goes to the body, but Al Sawadi with a flurry upstairs. So the body shot doesn't do anything. Al Sawadi is, he's, he's ready for it. Both guys hit simultaneous jabs. 42 seconds left in a first. Nice leg kick by Al Sawadi, followed by the right hand by Hardwick. Hardwick is kind of shaking his hands around. You can tell he wants to get something going here. 35 seconds left in a round, and here comes Al Sawadi again. Another flurry to the face. 
of Hardwick. Now, what I will say is Hardwick probably ate Al Sawadi's hardest shots, so he's got to know he could take his punch. I'm curious if we get... Oh, there's another left hand by Al Sawadi as he circles. And there's a nice right by Hardwick. And Hardwick tries to follow with the head kick. So I was going to say is in the second round, I'm assuming Hardwick's going to come out a lot more aggressive. Hardwick missing with the head kick. Just goes right over Al Sawadi's head. Finishes the round with a leg kick, but Al Sawadi's up one zip. Wow. What do you guys in the chat think? Those that are watching along with us, what do you think about that round? Al Sawadi probably got one. 33 to 21 in strikes. 33, 21 significant. And all the stats are right there for you. <laughs> a knockoff mini Ethan Hawk. <laughs> yeah, Hardwick's, I would imagine he's going to be a lot more aggressive in this round. I would imagine. He's not ready for the UFC. Um, we got to see more. But had a little bit of a rough round there. He got a little bit of a shiner too. Hardwick, that is. Um, yeah, welcome, welcome to the Contender Series. This is not even the UFC fighter that you're fighting. Oh, at least they, they didn't give Hardwick a layup. This guy, Al Sawadi's ready, man. He's game. Or maybe they thought it was a layup and... I don't know. This guy's got a lot of experience. He's 14-3-0, so... Okay, here we go. Second round. Let me uh, switch the round here. We haven't seen the second much tonight. I'm very impressed by Al Sawadi's game plan. There's a nice right hand by Hardwick. So there we go. Hardwick backs up. He just looks very slow. I mean, there could be a lot of nerves, too. He's also working with a pancake ass. You know, that, that's a problem. There's a right and a left hitting off the blocked arms. Al Sawadi landing, and then a left hits through the guard. It looks like, Al, it looks like Hardwick left his ass in the locker room. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Nice left hand by Hardwick. And then Al oh, there's the body shot by Hardwick that the people were talking about. That landed nicely. So Hardwick comes in more aggressive. Definitely has a sense of urgency here, see here in the second round. Hardwick comes up with a little head kick. And Al Sawadi eats it. Al Sawadi going back to the game plan. Moving the arms around. Trying to land and move. Circling the cage is Al Sawadi. Al Sawadi shoots him for the takedown. Oh, switches it up in the second. So the stand-up was working nicely. Now Al Sawadi pushing Hardwick to the fence. Can't hold him there. Hardwick a little too strong. Pushes off. 345 left hook by Al Sawadi. So how about that? Al Sawadi was doing very good things in the first round on the feet. Then switches it up with the takedown to throw Hardwick off. Either that or Al Sawadi's getting tired from all the bouncing around. So something to look out for. Maybe the gas tank is dropping. Adrenaline. Oh, we'll see. We'll see. 320 left. Hardwick moves in. Tries to catch Al Sawadi with the right hand. Al Sawadi swinging in with hooks. 315. The jab by Hardwick comes out, but Al Sawadi throws two back his own way. A hook grazes off the top. A knee and a right hand. A lot of swinging and missing, but oh, beautiful straight right hand by Hardwick. Lands on the face of Al Sawadi. Sawadi so backs up. Comes in with the right. Nice left hand by Hardwick. So Hardwick, when he lands, they're landing flush. Looks like he's got some pop in those hands. And he's just patiently moving in on Al Sawadi. There's a nice right by Al Sawadi. So Wadi backs up after a high kick moves in by Hardwick. Then there's a lay kick. Al Sawadi stumbles back, throws the left in. Hardwick moves forward. Hardwick throws the right, and then a flurry of punches greets him to the head by Al Sawadi. Damn, bro. Yo, Al Sawadi, 151 strikes, landed only 56. But, I mean, my man's keeping the volume going. I know Hardwick, a nice left hand. Hardwick, 72 strikes, 34. So, a lot more finch efficient when he's striking. There's a nice combo by Hardwick. Probably best combination of the fight so far for George. George moving in on Al Sawadi. Al Sawadi throws the jab, followed by the straight, followed by the jab. Two minutes on the clock. Hardwick moving in. And Al Sawadi goes back to his circular motion around the cage. Hardwick slips. And, oh, man, he fell to the ground. It was just a slip on the mat. And Al Sawadi jumps on him. Oh, that is a bad turn of events for Hardwick. 
Oh, that's terrible. Oh, boy. Who's winning? Al Selwadi. I, Hardwick was having his moments in that second round, but that slip did him no favors. And now Al Salwadi, who win the first round, if he if he finishes strong, he's got to be active. There's a nice elbows from the bottom by Hardwick. And Al Salwadi's trying to hold him down. He's got to advance that position. He's he's kind of standing and crouching over him. Now Hardwick gets back up. Good job by Hardwick. Back up to the feet, beauty. So the slip does nothing. Okay, let's see if Hardwick can end strong. As he gets back up. Whoa, miss by the hook by Al Selwadi. And Hardwick had a chance there. Al Selwadi, oh, nice right hand. Followed by the meat hook by Hardwick. The left hand by Al Selwadi. Now Al Selwadi to the body. Oh, Hardwick is dribbling now, guys. And he kicks towards the body. Man, Sean O'Malley started the dumbest fucking move in the UFC. The, stu the dribble is, is so stupid. <laughs> oh, the front kick by Al Selwadi to follow. So Hardwick showed off some dribbling moves and then ate a fucking bunch of shots by Al Selwadi. 30 seconds left. A hook comes in a right hand again by Al Selwadi. Hardwick comes back with the left. 25 seconds on the clock. This round a little closer than the first, in my opinion. But let's see who finishes stronger. 17 seconds left. Mm. Oh, nice left by Al Selwadi. I tell you what, though, like these strikes that are landed by Al Salwadi, he's landing more, but is it really doing much? I don't know. Bunch of head kicks miss. I think Al Salwadi's up two rounds to zip, though. I do. <sighs> Hardwick is having all sorts of trouble out there. The hype is with Hardwick, but he hasn't done anything yet. He's done absolutely nothing. So maybe it could be jitters, it could be nerves, or he could just possibly be overrated who knows but we'll see we still have one more round I am not impressed at all by this kid at all I see him getting run over by the lightweight division from what I'm seeing in front of me here <laughs> I mean I don't know what you guys have seen before maybe you guys seen some spectacular stuff but Hardwick looks like a he looks like he is not ready now he's only 26 years of age he's still a very young guy you know I mean, but boy, oh boy. We'll see what happens in this round. Now watch Har Harwick flatline him, and then we all eat our words. He's big on TikTok. Is that true? Is that actually true? Is it more of a social media? Maybe he marketed himself really well. I mean, he's got a bunch of finishes. He's 12 and 1. Cage, anytime I hear these guys coming out of Cage Warriors these days, I got to be honest, I'm a little skeptical there's not much good talent coming out of there lately. You know? It's been weird. It's been a little lackluster coming out from there. I feel like they're like padding up these guys' stats. Like, who's who's the best thing? Oh, here's another combination by Al Salwadi. Just a lot of overhyped talent. Good body shots by Al Salwadi. Oh, my God. Al Salwadi just landed about six in a row. Yeah, Hardwick is he's gotta yo, he's gotta turn up, man. Now's the time, Hardwick. You gotta make your move. I'm hard for Hardwick. Can't blame the nerves. They all have nerves tonight. Well, I mean, I don't know, man. We got three fights with finishes. I mean, Hardwick looks like he looks like a deer in headlights. Dude start dribbling in the third round. I mean the second round. It's like, what the fuck, bro? 350. Hardwick is trying to come up with something here. He's letting a couple of shots fly, but they're not really landing. Al Wadi just keeps the volume coming, throwing the jab out there, and Hardwick is just having all sorts of problems. 335 left. My man's going to need a finish. Hardwick's just... Oh, there's a nice right hand by Hardwick, followed by a right hand by Al Wadi. Both guys landing nice. Oh, Al Wadi ducks and drops the right, right on Hardwick's goatee. And Harvick moves in. Little blood. He's dribbling again. Harvick is dribbling again. Dude, is he retarded? Is there something wrong with this guy? Why is he dribbling? Dude's losing the fight. He started dribbling again. He started going like this. <laughs> is he slow? Harvick's 
Harvick trying to come to the body, and here comes Al Sawadi again. Al Sawadi switching on the stances. <laughs> this is this is bad, man. It's a bad performance. Well, the good news is this: if he doesn't get a contract tonight, he's still very young. Back to the drawing board. He'll be back in the contender series, especially if he's got this hype. But he will not get a contract tonight. So Al Sawadi grabs the leg. Harvick spins off. More rights are coming in by Al Selwadi. Yeah, Al Selwadi's just working them in. Just keeping the pressure. Nice right. Al Selwadi hits him with the left to right again. Another right. Al Selwadi shoots in. Hits him with a body shot. Hardwick's landing nothing. Oh, the one-two by Al Selwadi. Right on the face of Hardwick. That, I think that hurt him. Oh, it busted open his nose. Al Selwadi. Oh, he might, go, he might be going for the finish here. 204 left. He's got Hardwick against the fence. Bro. Oh my god. Yo, Hardwick is just getting worked. Now he's against the fence here. 150 left on the clock. And Al Selwadi's looking to drag him down to the ground, high up on the crotch. All right, Al Selwadi, uh, uh, Hardwick fans of the chat, help me out here. Tell me what's happening. What's going on? Why, why is this happening? There's a nice knee by Hardwick as he spins off the cage. Here we go. You never know. We still got buck 30 left. Let's see if Hardwick can shock the world here. There's a nice right and left again by Al Selwadi. Hardwick moving in. I hope he starts dribbling again. <laughs> That's worked so well for him. <laughs> oh, God. 110 on the clock. And Al Sawadi hits him with the right. Comes in with the left. Backs up Hardwick. Hardwick resets back to the middle. Hits him with the leg kick. Hardwick tries to hit him with a flying knee. He could barely get up there. But here's a nice combo by Hardwick as he moves in late. 55 seconds left. And Al Sawadi trips him down. Takes him to the ground. Oh, my God. He just took him down. All right. This fight's over. 45 seconds left. Al Sawadi trying to settle inside the guard. And Hardwick has... Lost every round. Oh, my God. That was a pretty pitiful performance. So, Harwick on his knees. But very good performance by Al Salwadi. You know, a small, um, lightweight. I, I heard um, Laura Sanko saying one of them reminds him of Volkanovsky. Well, I got to be honest with you. I could, I could see it with Al Salwadi. Al Sawadi has a very relentless switching stances, switching, like, everything he's done is different. He's against the cage. He's going for a single here. That's it. The fight's over. Yeah, man. Very frustrating type of fighter. I bet he gets a contract. Wow. Wow. Al Sawadi outworked him. I bet he gets a contract. That's very impressive because not only did he just dominated a guy that's a hype train out of the UK that everyone, like when we started the stream, people were jumping in our chat. Yo, when is Harwick fighting? Holy smokes. Dana doesn't look too happy as he walks to the back. I have a feeling he would have loved to seen Harwick do a little bit better. But um, congratulations to this Palestinian kid. That was that was a very solid performance. We'll get We're going to get to the contracts now. I'm telling you right now, I'm not trying to shit on Cage Warriors, but there's a reason why I stopped watching it. I've noticed that the talent coming out of there is not very good. It's It's been, eh. A lot of these guys that are hyped up, most of them are just flopping. You know? So, I'll wait for the talent pool to get a little bit better before I get like real amped up when guys from Cage Warriors come out. It's slim pickings these days. It's a shame, man. He's got to look, the kid. Try another league for better competition. I have a feeling that Cage Warriors is padding some stats. Lining up. You know what I'm saying? I think they're building up some of these guys. That's what I'm guessing. I haven't been watching in a while. Yeah, Ian Gary. Ian Gary is good out of there. But even Patty Pimblett. I mean, come on, man. He's been, he's been completely exposed. Thirty twenty seven. Oh, my God. Hardwick, Hardwick looks shocked. <laughs> what a win for Abdul, man. What a win for this kid. Wow. Came in a pretty decent-sized underdog. 
I mean, and is Abdul is he even is he even a lightweight? Because I tell you what, he looks like he looks like he could probably be a featherweight. Let me see this guy, Abdul. I want to see what weight class was his last fights. Uh, so, so he's the lightweight champion. I guess he is a lightweight, huh? Not the biggest lightweight, but he does. He has like a Volkanovski esque attack. Poor from George. Wonder did time zone and fight week have an imp Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Maybe his head, you know, maybe it was the traveling. Maybe it's just the hype was too much, you know? He's, the weight on his shoulders, it was too much. I don't know enough about the kid. Like I said, I have never seen him fight. So I don't I don't know. But you know, there's there's a couple of things we can say is what it is. The good news is this. If you're team George, the good news is he's only 26 years of age. He will 100% be back in the Contender Series. It's not even a question. And most likely will probably wind... If he's that popular, he's going to wind up somehow in the UFC. The problem is, right now, he is not ready. He's clearly not ready for the UFC. So hopefully he goes back to the drawing board, gets a couple extra wins, hops back in the Contender Series, sharpens the tools, and then we'll see. We'll see. But he's not ready now. Both deserve a contract? Stop it! <laughs> but there's no way, George. <laughs> George got ran over, man, like three rounds. We, you missed the whole contender series. How dare you? We're going to get to the contracts now. 99 degrees. Oh, that's nothing, that Winger. That's nothing. Right now, 104 over here. Easy work. Easy work. Actually, no, today was fucking brutal. I don't know what was going on. I went for a walk today, and, and I'm great with the heat. Today, I even looked at Jess. I'm like, I can't even handle this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it was humid or what. <clears throat> today was a little... It was a little... The air was a little thick. Were any of the fights good that I missed? Uh, we, we saw two decisions and three finishes. The finishes were pretty impressive. Um... What, two first round or three first round finishes? Yeah, three of them were first round finishes. I'm thinking every fight gets a contract. These days, the way Dana's been, I'm going to say all five fighters get contracts easy. But um, you had the light heavyweight in Aslan finish in the first round. He waited. He was very patient and then seized the moment and just blitzed and destroyed the Brazilian. Uh, Emil... Got the unanimous decision win. Looked up pretty solid in that fight. Um, he stopped like 24 takedowns. My man, uh, Emra, was just constantly shooting. And this dude, uh, he didn't stop all 24, excuse me. Like five were complete out of the 24 takedowns. So 24 attempted takedowns, somewhere around there. And Hyder still got the job done. Mora got the first round finish. Way bigger than her opponent. Um, but people in the chat were saying champion. We got to see more, but she's now 9-0. and um, And this Gregorio fella got the uh, finish in the first round. Just upset. Upset. Underdog. Finish in the first round. So, I mean, not a bad contender series. Uh, last fight was a little lackluster. But um, all in all, we might have some interesting talent. We'll wait for Dana. Make his uh, comments. Too much post-fight talking. They're just killing time. Oh, he wants to get on UFC Abu Dhabi. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. He yelled, he yelled to get on UFC Abu Dhabi. So the gentleman that just won. See, that's what Dana loves. Smart dude, man. Smart dude. So Al Selwadi says, put me on Abu Dhabi card. Don't be surprised. Hmm. Okay. In Salah. We'll see him back. 100%. He'll be back in the Contender Series. But I am very underwhelmed by his performance tonight, for sure. This was, Or maybe it was just a bad matchup. I don't know. Oof. Keep getting that pain. So for I think two joints asked about my rib pain. It's still here. Oh, it's so annoying. Oh, 
Oh, it's such an annoying pain. Thank you for the subscribes. Appreciate the new people coming in. By the way, we're giving away a Sean O'Malley signed card on Saturday. So that's going down Saturday night. So you must be subscribed to the channel, of course, to be in play for that. So if you want to get your pause on this Sean O'Malley signed card, let's go. Let's go subscribe to the channel. Okay, we're getting to the contract portion. He says the best show on TV. <laughs> best show on TV. It's good. Not much to say about this fight, he said. You're bringing him in. He's from Law MMA. How do you say no to this guy? The kid from Law MMA. I got to talk to this guy, man. Very, very impressive upset win. Dana doesn't look happy that some of his favorites lost. 9-0. and Eight finishes. Eight finishes. Something to contend with, sir. Absolute domination over a five foot girl. She can fight anybody. She can walk in tomorrow and fight anybody. You got a contract. All right, she's in. Two contracts. Don't worry, it's going to be all five. Oh, here's the guy that's, you know, takedowns, let's see. He says, I knew it. I knew it. He's talking about the scrambles and he's talking about. And I just need cheap labor, so get over here. Watch. You can tell they were exhausted. They had nothing left. Before, he would have never given this guy a contract. He's talking about digging deep and find the will. And I love that. He, I got goosebumps, he's saying. You dug deep. You're going to be cheap for five fights. Get over here. Cheap labor. Get on over here, you cheap bastard. I love a deal. Get over here. <laughs> Emil's in. He's in. Here we go. You know he's in. <laughs> I can't wait to see you fight in the UFC. Get on over here. Cheap labor. Get over here. He's in, baby. Shocker. Here we go. Is it going to be a clean sweep? He's saying incredible already. He's licking his lips, Dana. The show is incredible. All right, so I guess they're waiting for this guy to hit the seats. So we can talk about if he got the contract. And then I'll bring Dana on. All right. They're talking about this guy now. Five to one underdog. <laughs> Full-time McDonald's salary. I think you make more at McDonald's, to be honest. You got to stay pretty active to not. All right, they're getting to this guy now. The kids and Jesse are wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for asking. They're doing well. He goes, real guys come out of cage warriors. Well, not lately. You fought the last round like you lost the first two. Yeah, 
You never played it safe. Get over here, cheap labor. Get over here. Hey, guess what, guys? So that's where the UFC has failed with the Contender Series. Listen, I'm happy these guys got contracts. At the end of the day, I am. I'm very happy for these guys. These guys, they put a lot into their craft. And, uh, you know, it's just a massive opportunity to be in the biggest organization out there, right? The UFC. And if they play their cards right, they win their fights, they're going to be making the big bucks, right? So um, it's a big deal. It's a big opportunity. So congratulations to all the fighters. They're taking pictures with the boss. But I do miss, as a fan of the sport, I miss it very much, the drama of do you get a contract. It's not there anymore. And it's not because Dana's being a nice guy. That's not that. They're making it like, oh, Dana's being a nice guy now. It's the cheap labor. That's, that's what it is. You know, they've realized, hey, if we keep bringing these guys in that will fight on any card for, you know, for peanuts, you know, we don't have to pay the big guys. And then what if these guys become champions, you know? By the time, you know, we're paying them the big bucks, you know, we got a lot out of these dudes. So, um, you know, I just wish there was a little drama in are they going to get a contract? Are they not going to get a contract? But um, that, that ship has sailed. Everyone gets a contract. It's like Oprah. You get a contract, and you get a contract. Had a friend who fa fought and dominated Danny Sabatello, uh, but didn't get a contract. Heartbreaking. Yeah, I have a couple of friends um, that were on the Contender Series. I have a couple of friends that did get contracts and that didn't get contracts. And in the early days, if you won by a decision, you were not guaranteed a contract. Man, oh, man. Yeah, it's fucked up, man. It's fucked up. So those guys in the early days of the Contender Series are like, what the fuck, bro? How does that work? But um, this is the time. If you get called into the Contender Series, all you have to do is win your fight. That's it. You just got to win. You win your fight, you're in. It's a big deal. So congratulations to these guys. They got the job done. Two underdogs, big wins. Um, And we're going we're gonna to move over to Dana... There's Mackenzie Dern. Hold on. There she is. <gasps> Look at my ass over here. <laughs> and now we're going to go. <laughs> oh, what a show we run. I'm so proud of our show. I'm so proud of everything we've accomplished over here. Our childish antics. Uh, let's see. What, what we got? Uh, let's see. Media Scrum Contender Series. All right, I'm going to try to pull up Dana. Incredible. A lot of incredible stuff. So I'm going to look for Dana. There's got to be... Um, let's see. Uh, Hardwick, uh, watch along. So other people are doing it. That's where we're doing it. There's got to be... Um, wow, a lot of people are alive for this. A lot of people are alive. What the fuck? fuck is this guy doing live? This is my time, fucking mop head. <laughs> Our money's not on anymore. It's my time, mop head. Dude, put the fucking beanie back on. Jesus Christ. What are we doing here? What the fuck? Take a shower. I still don't get how UFC misses out on guys like Jordan Oliver, who is in Bellator now. Well, I mean... You know what? I don't even know who the fuck is Jordan Oliver. I don't even know who that is. Who's Jordan Oliver? I'm, I'm being a complete casual. Let me look him up. Jordan Oliver. Have we seen this kid fight? Let me look him up. Tapology. Let's see. Well, here's the thing. The UFC can't have every good fighter out there, right? They they just can't. Jordan Oliver's 1-0. This guy? Oh, he's the wrestler? Hold on a second. Oh, I know who this guy is. I've seen this guy before. You talk about this dude, right? The wrestling dude? Okay. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Hmm. So where did he... He had his MMA fight in Bellator? Yeah, I'm like, who the hell... Who the fuck is that? Where did... Where was his uh, MMA... Oh, here we go. He was in Bellator. Yeah, he can't have everybody. You know? This kid's good, though, huh? Ba -dum -bum -ba -dum -bum. Bam. Uh, okay. 
Yeah, I don't know all these wrestlers, but I did hear about this kid. I did hear about him. Yeah, there's a bunch of wrestlers that are coming into the MMA world, and it's smart, man. It's the most dominating, you know, craft in MMA. Like, you could literally, you could throw a couple, you know, a half-decent punch, but if you have a strong wrestling background, you know, it's a problem. It opens up your striking, you know? So it's a, it's a good foundation in MMA. I'm looking for... I'm going to look to see if we can get the Dana Media Scrum over here for you guys. And then we'll wind it down. Okay. That's what I'm looking for. So give me a second. They usually do a Media Scrum after this. Let's wrestle. Let's wrestle. Uh, it's the post-Olympic cycle after the Olympic trials. Look out for all the... Ah, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Hey, Jesse. Uh, great to see you. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, Jesse's here. Hold on. Wait, what's happening? Oh, hold on a second. All right, I'm going to play... Uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a quick break, and then when I come back, we're going to do a little bit of the... Um, what's it called? We're gonna do a little bit of the the Dana press conference, okay? Even if it happens already, I'll, I'll play it on over here. I just not press conference, media scrum, and then we'll wind it down. So we're gonna go a little bit later today. So stand by for this break, and when we'll come back, we'll have it all ironed out, and we'll listen to Dana, okay? So give me a second. All the fighters got contracts, upsets tonight. So we we'll hear what Dana has to say about that stuff. So stand by. Go get a drink, hit the like button, and we'll be right back. All righty. Stand by. Do you feel that the UFC is doing your favorite fighter dirty and not paying them enough? Well, I understand. They need to be paid appropriately. They put their lives in danger inside a cage and compete in their underwear. And that's not easy to do. You can make a difference by going to millions.co link in the description if you're a creep or a pervert you can get a signed fight used and worn bra if you're a normal human being you can get a signed hat or signed gloves anything is possible at millions so click that link change a fighter's life and if you don't well, stop bitching and complaining about fighter pay.
the MMA Holes Hour here. Hope oh, you're wonderful, wonderful JBH. How are you? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful boss. boss. How are you? Tonight's episode is filled with delight. Tonight's episode is filled with might. Tonight's episode, we dive into the fight on Saturday night. Take it out. Round one is about to begin. Oh, the head kick right here coming in. It's about to finish. Whoops. Hammer fist. More or less hands are coming in. The fight is over. The fight is over. Yeah, hit them fucking likes, man. This All is right. what we're giving you tonight, man. The hell's okay, sorry, guys. I didn't even have the fucking... I didn't have the break. <laughs> you had the audio. You had the audio. All right, let me look for this Dana White stuff. Then we'll get out of here. Um, it's so crazy, man. Jesse's got like a, it's like a madhouse. Kids, these poor kids are going crazy. All right, so let's see, let's see. What outlet's gonna have this? Anyone know? Let's see, Dana White Contender Series. Let's go, Dana. I want to hear what you got to say. It's been a minute. Is he not talking to the media? Does anyone in the chat know if Dana's talking to the media yet? Usually that shit's live. Boom, 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 boom. What the fuck? Getting fraud vibes from this fight already? Fraud vibes? I don't know. <clears throat> okay, hold on a second here. I'm looking for if Dana's hitting the media. He might not. Usually he hits it after the contender series, so I'll keep an eye out for it. If anyone sees what outlet's got it going on, let me know. We'll play it. I told everyone on Guru Stream to come back here, but they didn't listen. All just <laughs> there are a lot of kids over there. No, it's it's a different demographic. Like there, there are a lot of kids there, so it's like you know, you know that's we have we definitely have a different audience. There's no doubt about that. So I would just leave them be. Let them do their thing, you know? There's plenty of room for all of us. Hmm. Let's see. Has MMA fighting got anything going on? Usually Dana hits the uh, media pretty quick. Maybe he's getting a quick hummer. You know, he might be getting, you know, his knob slopped. UFC bet. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's not it. Save says live will begin in 12 minutes. Was on the UFC's channel. Let's see. UFC. You guys watch the embedded yet? I didn't see him yet. Uh... Anything good? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> it's really sickening. <laughs> Wait, where are you guys seeing that? Is that on the UFC channel? Let's see. Live. Or is it on another outlet? Oh, here we go. Ceremony. No. Nope. Nope. Well, oh, they got a lot of live scheduled at UFC. Dana, oh, here we go. Found it. Dana White's contender series. All right, so if you're going to spam, this is the place to spam, okay? If you're... Uh, <laughs> I see Seattle Ryan in there. If you're going to spam, this is the place to do it, okay? This is this is where you spam. In here. Okay? This is where you spam. Right over here. That's where you spam. You binge all the imbe yeah, I, I'd rather Im binge it too. I've been slacking though, man, with with the embedded. Like I've been really slacking. All right, so 
We're going to listen to the boss, and then we're going to get the fuck out of here. Yo, spam it with Gummy Gang. Go, go, into, <laughs> go into the UFC. Welcome to live chat. Remember to... All right, yeah, we can say Gummy Gang. Yo, go into the UFC live chat, the UFC YouTube channel, and just spam Gummy Gang. Go in there and go, Gummy Gang, Gummy Gang. Gummy Gang, Gummy Gang. Gummy Gang. That's the guy. That's the guy. All right, so Squad Ward, thank you, Squad Ward. Appreciate it. At least one of you. <laughs> thank you, Squad Ward. True legend. True legend right there. I will wait for we'll wait for that to get going. I'll play a little bit of that and then we'll bounce. If there's anything else you'd like to chat about, let me know what you got going on in the chat. What are your feelings on UFC 292? It should be a pretty good event. I spoke about it yesterday. I'm, I'm pretty psyched. Pretty, pretty psyched about it. So UFC 292. When I hear Gummy Gang, I think of a girl that used to give me gum jobs. What the fuck? What the fuck? What kind of, kind of girl you been with, bro? What kind of girl you been with? I got a little bit more of the gummy gang. <laughs> the gummy gang is infiltrating. <laughs> People in the UFC chat be like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what are these people talking about? What's going on here? What the fuck? The fuck is the gummy gang? <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, uh, let's see. Gummy Gang, uh, a job's a job. I had a missed call from the emails. How much you've come oh, from. Hold on a second. What are those emotions and what, what's the outlook move? All right, I don't care about this guy, man. Yo, get to Dana, man. All right, this guy should be quick, though. Get this guy out of here. We want to talk to the boss. We want the boss. All right, so while that's happening, I'm going to do this really quick. Gummy gang, gummy gang. All right, I'm going to bring the boss in. Do this. Okay. Do this. Gummy gang, gummy gang. Here's what I wrote down for you. Direct, focused, and waste no time. Seems like this is your superpower. Oh my God. It is. Is, is it what we're gonna look forward to moving forward in future fights <laughs> with you? Yeah, you know, I'm very, um, I'm very focused uh, and I believe uh, in myself. This guy? Um, and I know I have skills, you know, and I know I'm gonna be a problem in the UFC, in the Bandam Wind Division. Uh, so, and because I started, I started from the bottom, you know, and to be here today, now I'm here. um, I've been like, my God, I struggle a lot. I don't even, I don't want to remember. All right. So, uh, yeah, the, um, the questions are, they're really bad, especially during like the contender series, because you don't have the, the a squad, you don't have like the actual media members. Like you got just. The, the media members that are sent to the contender series are basically, you know, they're the interns. Looking forward to it, and congratulations. Thank you so much. All right, get out of here. We want Dana. No offense to you. Thanks. Get out of here, please. Thank you. All right. That's the little MMA guy, though, right? I'll be rooting for him. Okay. <clears throat> gummy gang, gummy gang. Let's go, baby. Let's go, champs. I would imagine Dana's going to get in here pretty quick because of um, he's got to get back home to watch The Ultimate Fighter. <laughs> he's 
You know? Dana got to get back home to watch the Ultimate Fighter. Big night tonight. Tough. Big night. <clears throat> what do we got? Oh, not Dana. But we got this young lady. Hold on a second. Let's bring her in. She had a nice win. Eduarda Maura. Congratulations. How does this feel? Parabéns. Como é que é o sentimento? It feels like Caramba. shit. Caramba. <laughs> it feels great. A ficha ainda tá caindo aos poucos, mas eu tô muito feliz. Muito feliz mesmo. Realizada. Um, you know, it's, it's still dawning on me. Yeah. Um, not yet, but I'm very happy. Very From happy. From the favelas very, to the feel, UFC. feel very accomplished. At what point do you think it's going to set in? Is it when you're going to be, you know, home tonight or maybe back home in a couple weeks? What will it take for you to, to for it to click? I'm in the UFC. Em que ponto que você acha que a ficha vai cair? Vai ser agora, voltando pro hotel, em casa, agora no hotel, quando voltar pro Brasil? Em que ponto que você acha que vai fazer aquele clique, vai dizer, pô? Wait, wait, pause it, guys. Pause. It. I don't care what she has to say. Yo, what? Coming in with the 35? What? É demais. <laughs> I think when I get to the hotel, take a, a shower. A big steamy shit. And I think that's when I'm going to cry out, you know, a lot and, and realize that's going to be so good. And when do you start looking at the roster and see who you're going to, who you want to fight next? Is that going to oh, be tonight super too? Chat. Hold that thought, young lady. Holy crap, the production on the show is insane. Bravo. Handsome R7, thank you so much for the $35 donation. My God, 35 scuttles. Holy crap. Thank you so much. You are now the new Top Dog. dog. Woohoo! Dog. Let the dogs dog. out. Dog. Come on. Dog. Let's go, Come champ. On. Wow. Thank you, man. Thank you. That was very kind of you. Holy smokes. 35 bucks. Very kind. Quando que você vai começar já olhar nos nomes na divisão para contra quem você quer lutar? Já vai ser hoje à noite também? Eu já venho olhando há um tempo. <risos> é, Sexy. Eu já já venho olhando já, já conheço a divisão de 52, de 57 e a gente já tem uma uma agendinha ali com os nomes pretendidos um, e hum. São Paulo <risos> queria pedir aí a Dana, a Mickey, Mickey uh, me volta pra estar em São Paulo no card do meu amigo ali, parceiro Malhadinho eu sou fã demais desse cara e eu quero começar a estrear no, no UFC nesse, nesse evento se possível, por favor uh, I have been looking at the names I, I've been looking at the names I've studied the division, not just strawweight but also flyweight um, looking at the names, and you know, I have uh, I have a little notepad there with uh, with some names. And actually, uh, São Paulo, obviously, São Paulo. Dana shot, put me to fight in São Paulo. I really want to fight with that. The we guy want Dana. There, my training partner, Jay Otomeda Malajinho, who I admire so much. I love that man, and I would love to fight with him. Do you have a name on the top of that list that you're willing to say, or are you going to keep that a secret for now? E os nomes da gendinha, você pode revelar ou vai deixar segredo, diário? Vou deixar de segredo diário, surpresinha. <laughs> Sorry, I'll leave it as a secret. Second. Let's call it a diary. It's a surprise. I apologize. I fucked Dana up. Dana White said that you, he doesn't consider you a prospect. He considers that you can just go right in and fight anybody. How did that make you feel? É, o Dana usou especificamente a palavra que ele, não, você, você não, não é considerado uma contender. Ele não falou que você é um prospecto. Ele já considera você uma pessoa que ele pode botar para lutar na divisão. Como é que você se sente em relação a isso? Hey. Caramba, eu tava muito curiosa para saber o que ele ia falar sobre mim. Eu oh, nice, pensei em vários, vários, várias frases, várias, vários textos dele poder falar sobre mim, mas é, o que ele falou me surpreendeu muito. E huh. eu tô muito feliz. E queria agradecer por isso também. Obrigada, Dana. Um, you know, I thought so many times of all the things that could, he could say. I was just imagining all the things that he I could say about her. me. And... All right, hold on a second here, guys. Sorry about that. Just when you when you complimented my graphics, they fell apart. I am Jalton Almeida sitting next to her. 
Big Jout and Almeida. Fucking hell. It's all right. Hold on a second here, guys. I don't know what the hell that was about. There we go. That was annoying. Apologies. Apologies. Yo, que que significado ele tem na tua vida? Aham. Eu sou fã demais desse cara, velho. Eu sou fã da humildade dele, do trabalho dele. É, ele lá é exemplo para todos They're na academia smash. e todos nós queremos seguir o caminho dele. É, e, e aí tá dando certo, a gente tá aqui, tá seguindo. E ele é muito parceiro, muito companheiro, é família. É, pô, They're é um irmão pra mim, véio. Tá aqui ah. comigo, não tinha nem necessidade de estar e veio. É, pô, é forte isso aqui. I'm um, his fan. Uh, I, I, I admire. I, I, just, I just love his humility, his work ethic. Um, I just, I, I just love what he's doing right now. Just, it's, it's someone that's every. These guys smash, no doubt about it. He's a brother to me. He's always around. He's uh, it's just, it's, 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 we, we just love what he's doing, um, and everyone in the gym loves him. He's, uh, it, it, he didn't need to be here, and he's here right now. I love this guy. Well, when you won, I noticed that he was cheering so much, he almost flipped over the side of the, the railing. I don't know if you noticed that. Yeah, I don't know if you know, but when you won, he was torcing so much, he almost went back to the side of the railing. He almost threw a pirouette back, he almost threw a pirouette back, he almost threw a mortal. Did you know this? I didn't know. He was big, he was up and up there. So, yeah. She didn't know. So when do you want to get it? I know you said Sao Paulo. Do you, if they offered you something before that? All right. E eu queria fazer só mais um pedido. É, Dana, por favor, coloca a Eduarda no UFC São Paulo junto comigo. Ela merece, ela mostrou que merece. A minha é dedicada, então dê essa oportunidade para ela, por favor. Eu tô só, pedi só esse pedido que eu peço para você. Obrigado. I never asked anything of the UFC. Um, I thank them for the opportunity. The opportunity I gave to her, to myself, to Marlon. Oh, uh, so boring, man. Like, come on, I want Dana. Up on the loot of the fight Dana! shed back at home. Um, Dude, this is ridiculous. Dana usually pops out there. We get him. Is he even. Con if Dana doesn't show up to this thing, I'm going to be pissed. It would be amazing for her to fight in Sao Paulo November the 4th. What a bench. Um, I know you just said what Jalton means to you as a brother and as a teammate, but what's it like following his footsteps? Because he came through the contender series once as well. Oh, é, right. eu sei, parabéns, antes de tudo. He was é, the eu sei que você falou o quanto ele significa para você. Como... Another beast out of the contender series. Mas, mas também a trajetória dele, o fato que ele veio pelo contender, ele fez a mesma coisa. Então, como é que você vê isso? Você seguiu esses passos? É como eu falei, né? Ele é exemplo lá para todos nós e a gente tenta seguir os passos dele realmente. Eu até falei para ele que quando a entrada dele, quando eu entrei na porta, eu lembrei dele da entrada dele e isso não tem nem como explicar. É, a gente é o sofá. Oh, God! Give me Dana! A gente tenta seguir os mesmos passos. Não só aqui, como também nos treinos, na dedicação, na humildade. Que esse cara é humilde demais. Então. You think that was it? You think he's not going to talk to the fucking media? Damn. Of, of, uh, uh, just of what he is and what he means. Uh, the humility and the. Oh, no one cares. No one cares. Guys, no one cares. No one cares. No one cares. Congrats. You didn't win you didn't win the fucking belt. You got a contract. I'm looking forward to seeing what you got next. Definitely look like you you have some skill and you're a talented young lady. You sit next to Jal Almeida. This man could be a champ as well. Even though he's got a Lakers jersey on. But Jesus. Come on. Watching your performance. E com desempenho como esse, qual que é a mensagem? Let's ask the people that can't speak English a gazillion questions, but the people that can speak English, nah, I'll ask them like four questions. Que eu tô chegando e eu cheguei para ficar. E eu cheguei para mostrar que eu sou um animal diferente. Fiquem ligados aí. Um, that I'm here, that I'm here to stay, and then I'm a different kind of beast. Just stay tuned. Congratulations, hopefully they place you in the Sao Paulo card. Parabéns e tomara que seja em São Paulo. Thank you. There's something that you shared a while back ago, and this is what you wrote on Instagram. Oh my God. I give others the right to be themselves. I give myself a duty to be better every day. <laughs> Get rid of what this guy. What would you like to say to those who are scared to be themselves? 
and who would like to strive to be successful like you. Você colocou. Oh my God! Mais recentemente um post em que você fala eu dou a todos o direito de ser quem eles são e dou a mim só não sei se eu falo, eu falo em português mas a, a mim mesmo eu dou a, a, o dever de ser a melhor pessoa que eu posso ser. Se não me engano foi isso. O que que você diria para as pessoas que gostariam de para que elas sejam elas mesmas e All right, listen. What are we doing? What the fuck are we doing here? It's cool that Jalal made is there supporting her. This girl seems like she's talented young lady, you know? She does seem talented. Uh, I am curious to see what else she's got, you know, other than beating a five foot tall competitor. You know, let's see let's see her test it. It'd be interesting. Um, good, good hype, you know, women's, uh, MMA needs, you know, people with some hype. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully she could learn a little English that make things a little bit easier, you know, but Jesus Christ, give me Dana White. We're not here for this nonsense. They got Howl ahead. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We done. Oh, photo. Take a picture. There you go. Get it. That's a great picture. We'll put that on the website. Yeah, we'll take that picture. Give me another picture over here. That's good. Yeah, all right. Pose. Ah, uh, yes. The staff. The staff is behind them, but you can't see them. Oh, it's not the staff. That's their team. <laughs> Forget it. It's not. It's not showing up on the screen. Oh well. They're taking pictures, guys. Do you root for anyone when watching the UFC? No, I don't. Root, I don't for, root for anybody. I am a true professional. I stay as unbiased as possible. I never root for anybody. Do you? Rooting for people is for the weak. Okay, let's. Uh, hopefully, the boss comes in. <laughs> they could take a photo somewhere else. What the fuck is this? I know, right? Like, come on, bro. Like, what are you doing? Just get the fucking, get Mr. Pink out. He might not come out, right? If he hasn't come out yet. No, come on, man. Give me Dana. We're here for Dana. It's Dana White's Contender Series. Right? No, oh, fuck! <laughs> Alright, I might have to check out. Alright, what do we do, guys? Do we hang out, or... So this guy is up. This is the guy that stopped all the takedowns. Or do we get the fuck out of here? Because I have a What's feeling. Up, Alex? You know what's gonna happen? Man, how are you right. feeling? Feeling good. That was. Uh... You, you know what's gonna happen? Oh fuck! I hit the wrong button. You know what's gonna happen? Dana White's gonna. He's gonna. Um, he's gonna pop up like late or some shit like that. I'm like, oh god damn! He's gonna like drop some like great. So just talk he's gonna be like, oh by the way, Conor McGregor versus Chandler's official. And he's gonna say something like that, and I'm gonna regret turning the fucking stream off. But I just, listen, I'm happy for these kids, man. I'm really happy for them, but I don't know them, and I'd rather watch Gummy Gang. You don't give a fuck about tough. This is not tough. This is a contender series. Vietnamese style. <laughs> this is not, not the MMA holes, but it's starting to feel like it. All right. All right, I'm gone. That's it, guys. Thank you for stopping by. Tomorrow we have a great guest. So tune in. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. If uh, you are hanging in the UFC chat, you see Dana White, you see something good and juicy, tag us, and I'll check it out. But other than that, we're out of here. Thank you for stopping by once again, and uh, don't be an a-hole. Be an M M A. Ho! Let's go. Good night. Love, peace, and love. like fruit.